So you don't listen to the show? Is that what? What show? About? Smart Sorry. move. Smart you had move. two weeks to well, listen to one. Episode. Honestly, I had one week. <laughs> yeah, it's been sure. exactly since I go away for a week, and you guys just <sighs> let the whole thing fall apart. Uh, yep, yeah, pretty much. Son of a bitch. Hello, and welcome to episode number eight hundred and thirty-seven of the Player One Podcast for Tuesday, November 29th, twenty twenty-two. I'm your host. Chris Johnston, and with me as always, returning <clears throat> to Canada from the good old U.S. of A., Mr. Greg Seward. I don't feel like I was really in the U.S.A. I mean, I took a bus from the Orlando airport to the Disney bubble. Yeah. What was so, it like having freedom for uh, like a week and a half? <laughs> I know. You got a little for taste. 40-minute bus ride? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was expensive. Yeah. that's <laughs> Freedom isn't free, buddy. <laughs> That's right. Clearly Everything comes not. out of cost. <laughs> Especially with there that were, exchange rate. There were, a lot of, there were a lot of shirts walking around Disney World to remind me of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Oh, I was careful no. not to tread on people while I was there. That's oh, shirts kept reminding me. Well, joining us from the great state of Washington, Mr. Phil Theobald. Mm, hello. How's it going? Me? Yeah. Well, you. I'm just ducky. How are you? I'm good. Good, good, good. Good. Glad to hear it. Still recovering from all the Thanksgiving food. Oh, are you now? Yeah. I don't know how you guys do Thanksgiving so close to Christmas. That feels uh, like such a terrible idea. Thing. Beautiful thing. Hey, you know what? We we weren't the ones who decided when the Plymouths landed on Pilgrim Rock. That's right. We weren't the <laughs> ones who made Jesus' birthday land so close to <laughs> last night I heard Jesus was American, so I feel like darn tootin', buddy. Yeah. Listen, all the pictures I've seen, he was on. He yeah. was on the the Nina and the Pinta and the Santa Marina. That's right. <laughs> Looks a lot like uh, kid. I, I rode those. I rode shore. those at Disney World. What's that? I rode. I think those were rides at Disney World. They were. <laughs> were they? Did you go through the Hall of Presidents? No, we didn't. <laughs> I so wanted to. <laughs> I couldn't talk my kids into it. <sighs> Hmm. Did you go on the Country Bear Jamborees? I did. That was terrifying. Those the, it's the same ride. Woo! <laughs> yeah. It's the, yeah. Those bears are looking a little old. Well, More importantly, yeah. did you go to Galaxy's Edge, Greg? Oh, man. Yes. <laughs> God, That's so the reason awesome. I went there. Yeah. That's the main reason I went there. Yeah. 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 I mean, awesome. I'm glad my kids had fun, but like, oh, man, just walk the way it's built. Like you walk through an archway and then you're mm -hmm. just in star wars and it's there so it cool yeah well enough about your vacation we've got a special oh, guest here mr oh my joseph goodness. moran from the ps trophy room podcast <laughs> hey joe Jeez. how's it going hey i'm doing good greg more about this galaxy's edge <laughs> there we go see <laughs> did you make a bb8 <laughs> no you know what so that was the thing um <clears throat> and maybe with the new ceo things are going to get a little bit better but right now disney parks run on reservations uh, uh and i was not we my brother my son and i actually wanted to build a lightsaber yeah and i somehow missed the fact that since i didn't make a reservation like oh. two months in advance we couldn't get in to do that what a shame oh. so what a shame. yeah that's uh that's my 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 main takeaway mm -hmm. and i, 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 I try to that i try to yeah well i try to temper this a little bit because it makes it sound like we didn't have a good time we had a great time okay um, but my main takeaway is the fact that the whole park sort of runs on the app now because you have this, oh. this app that tells you like how long the, the, the lines are, um, how long the wait is. And also that's how you buy lightning lanes, which is what they call fast pass now with Genie Plus and stuff like that, that I found that we spent most of our time sort of going from lightning lane to lightning lane. Mm. And you didn't get to enjoy the parks sort of. Uh, uh, I. Yeah, like you, you know, organically, that's the word I'm looking for. Like, mm. you know, like because those parks are built in such a way that there's so much to sort of stumble across and so many cool little bits and secrets to to find. You know, like you're walking down Main Street. We noticed on the way out on our first day of Magic Kingdom that one of the shop fronts on Main Street, as we were leaving, had dioramas from Mickey's Christmas Carol mm. all set up, which I have a couple mm. of pictures of. It, it, it had nothing to do with what was in the shop. Right. It was just one of those things that like you look to your left. It's like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And like Animal Kingdom, kind of the same thing. Like that's built so that you're kind of when you walk through, you like discover 
especially at the beginning, it's almost like a bird sanctuary. So you kind of discover all these different animals. But it's like, well, my head's down on the phone because we have our lightning lane for Everest, Expedition Everest, oh. when you get over there. So, you know, huh. again, it was a great time. But the knock on effect of that is, is that you're 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 scheduling, you're spending all your time scheduling. And if you're not spending all your time scheduling, then um, the lightning lanes, because they're so predominant now, the standby lines for most of the rides is really long. Uh, so you're either waiting in line or you're scheduling your next line. And that was kind of, you know, especially with places like Galaxy's Edge and also Pandora, like Pandora is amazing. And I'm not even yeah. a big uh, Avatar fan, but like you go into like the Pandora area and it's so immaculately created like you're you're in Pandora, right? Like it's it's just gorgeous. And you kind of like me being the type of person that I am, I kind of want to just walk around and take in every detail and just sort of, you know, drink it all in. And you can't because your lightning lane for for Flight of the Navi is is in five minutes. So you want to get over there and do that, right? Mm. Okay. So, but anyway, again, I that I makes it sound way more negative the, than it was. It was I don't think it I was bothered with time. any of the Avatar stuff, personally. I wouldn't either because I'm not an Avatar fan. But um, the two rides were great. Okay. Oh, really great. Okay. So. Well, listen, I'm from the Trophy Room of PlayStation podcast. <laughs> where each and you every are. week, you my best friend Kyle <laughs> talking about the latest and greatest in all things PlayStation. And I'm just happy to be here to learn from Greg's mistakes so <laughs> that when I go to Galaxy's Edge, there it is. Well, I get to craft that. I'm that really Bob I'm Iger. really interested to see because while we were there was when they announced that Bob Iger is coming back as CEO. Right. And the previous CEO, one of the big uh strikes against him was people said that he had kind of not ruined the parks but had deteriorated the experience at the parks mm. so i'm curious okay. to see like we have friends who are going in march and i really want to find out what their experience is like it's so interesting because like as as like just a, a passerby of like the entertainment world or whatever <clears> like <throat> i've haven't had much of an impression on what's the, the guy's name bob Bob Chapek. Iger is the new guy. Or Chapek was the last Chapek. Guy. Chapek. The old guy. Chapek. Yeah. I haven't like Chapek. I, I I only know of him from the controversies, but like I didn't know mm -hmm. Disney was in rough shape with him, and that there was a yearning for Bob Iger to come back a yeah. while ago. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, yeah. you look at uh, there's that there's that resort where it's the experience where you're staying in like the the starship. Yes, um, which is insanely priced yeah it's like four thousand right. bucks a person yeah or like it's way dumb. too much like stuff yeah. like that and the, like the whole park kind of all the part the resorts kind of feel that way now it's like i've been three times in the last 15 years because we went on my honeymoon and then we took the kids like seven years ago and then we took them again now hmm. and again like the customer service has always been fantastic that's always been disney world's like main uh thing for me is that you're you are you're always going to get good service yeah um but like like the, the the rides break down a little bit more now and just every if you feel like you're being mm. nickel and dimed all the time well bob right? jpeg can't be everywhere i mean come on you That's expect true. him to i mean he's running around working on the box yeah big thunder mountain railroad and now yeah. you need him over at star tours i mean come right. on it's pretty That's good right. cj yeah <laughs> <laughs> i learned that from uh watching your stream the big big thunder mountain railroad no yeah. oh, okay just saying <laughs> Jeff Grubb loves Bob Chapek. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> he seems like a Chapek fan. <laughs> he seems like yeah. <laughs> seems like a Chapek head. That's right. Yeah. Well, we can talk yeah. about some video game news here. Not <laughs> really all that much happened. Uh, but Greg, I thought you would be interested to know that Yuji Naka got arrested while you were I gallivanting saw that. Man. in Orlando. I know Balin's <laughs> Wonderwall wasn't great but i think i was the one who told you guys he was arrested i posted that in our chat you did yeah I, yeah for insider trading possible insider trading oh based on uh dragon quest mobile game that was about to be announced there were uh some square enix folks that got uh that caught wind of it early and apparently bought stock in the company that got uh the development contract. So, so is Yuji Naka related to Square Enix now? I, I haven't followed him. Well, he was an employee of Square Enix oh, uh, he? for mm. Balan Wonderworld, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And well, now he's, he's in jail, jail because fast. of Square Enix. <laughs> well, yeah. he's not in jail because of Square Enix. No, because of himself. <clears throat> yeah. Just Yuji Naka uh, being Yuji Naka. 
I thought they I thought they would have arrested him a long time ago for the state of Sonic, but that's just me. <laughs> I was gonna say I thought they put him in jail for Sonic. Just yeah, when I saw that he was in jail, I was like, really? They do that to people? <laughs> if not yeah, for Sonic, they do that definitely for, for Balan Wonderworld. I mean, Balan Wonderworld. If not 06, then it has to be for Balan. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Exactly, but true. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So, uh, well, the Game Awards nominations happened. Yes, and. People seemed up in arms about some of that, but honestly, what? Who watches the Game Awards for the awards part? Don't we all watch it for the trailers? Yeah, I just want that sweet, sweet advertising. Mm-hmm. That's right. Hook mm-hmm. it to my veins. Give me, give me all the ads. So no one, no one cares about like anything shown. They just, like we, we're only caring about the the advertisers, like the. Yeah, the little trailer here, little trailer. No, there. to be no. totally, to be totally fair, I I do like I, I like the idea of the Game Awards. I sure. I feel like they've, I think they've gotten better, but I feel like they've struggled for a long time to find that balance. But I also realized that you know you got to pay the bills, so yeah. you know I mean I do like it just because I think they they have started to hit, sort of hit that balance where it's about new trailers and awards, although they still lean way heavier into the new trailers. Than I would like. I would really like to see the awards get a bit more airtime. Um, but I do like seeing some of these games that are getting, you know, that are getting um, recognition, even as as nominees, for sure. Because, like, yep. for me, Kyle and I had this conversation last week. Of the problem with the Game Awards is it, it feels like someone saw Google Analytics like trends, <laughs> and they're yeah. like, these games trend really well. I think <laughs> these will be our nominees. <laughs> and listen, I get it. Like it's, yeah. it has been a slowish year uh, for at least on the AAA side. But like, mm-hmm. you know, Greg, I, I'm kind of I'm with you, and then some on the. I feel like in the past few years they haven't gotten it right. Like last year they no. gave nominees like 30 seconds to to talk, you know, yeah. to to say yeah. thank you, and then just cut them off. And I I feel like to me I'm missing the the heartfelt version of the game awards you know what it was i think three maybe four years back of just like you know seeing seeing people like greg miller you know thanking the devs on stage thinking about Mm -hmm. you know uh, my dragon cancer winning for impact um those are like terrific moments that are highlighting the people that are making these games and i feel like it's just getting so far away Away from from that, that that we're just like okay but like you showed us the Xbox Series X, so this year you have to show us God. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, and <laughs> no, it, that's it just it hurts. You, you're absolutely right, and that's exactly what it, that's exactly how I feel about it too. It's like those those small moments that, like what you just described, are where these awards shine. But it feels like the producers aren't necessarily looking for those. It's great that they're happening. But it is a rush to get to the next trailer, or the next reveal. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's mixing. It's trying to mix like you know a legit award show in with an E3 yeah. uh, press conference, and it, they again they they haven't gotten they haven't gotten it right. Um, yeah. But yeah, that I, I hope they do, and I I do love to see like looking at the awards, uh, the Game of the Year awards. Like I love that Plague Tale is on there. You know, there's some obvious, you know, I expected Elden Ring, God of War, Horizon, but Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and Stray and, and Plague Tale. Like, it's nice. That's nice to see those there. I didn't necessarily, it wasn't a given that they would be there, right? You know, yeah. I feel so happy for Stray, yet <clears throat> so bad for those devs. Because on one hand, like, you just got this terrific gift of being nominated to be up a, against your God yeah. of Wars, your Elden Rings. And then the internet has decided that you were great in all, but you really don't that there. great. Yeah. yeah, you don't belong there. <laughs> exactly. It's it's the it's the Civil War moment. It's like, that's my dad shield. You it doesn't belong to you. It's like feel yeah. like any successful game developer at this point has learned to ignore the internet. Maybe that's yeah. just me. But... Yeah. Well, and also so. there's so many different genres now and so many yeah. games that like excel in those genres that game of the year doesn't really represent the totality of, of course what mm. games are now right and yeah. Yeah. there are three console platforms plus pc 
And there's just a lot of great stuff, especially like indie stuff. There's so many great indie games coming out all the time. And it's hard to uh, to say those aren't as good as Elden Ring or God of War. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. for what they offer, they can be, right? And what was the game that was in, uh, there was some game that was put in the fighting game category, Sifu. Sifu. <laughs> where it's like, that's not really a fighting game, but where do you put it then, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I feel like the genre categories are getting so broad. So I maybe even like, maybe vague is the word. Because you're right, like Sifu is like, it's a brawler for sure. Fighting's a huge element of it, but like, and it is a, a brilliant rogue light. Or roguelike, whatever term we're going to use. <laughs> whatever term is <laughs> yeah. the right one. Is it a roguelike or a roguelite? It's like well, let's make one a of different yeah. let's let's make a different name that doesn't sound so similar. Uh but <laughs> you know for me, I, I I can never get past how mean and cruel the internet can be. That's why to me I'm like Oh yeah. Yeah, as, as we we hope that these devs are, you know, keen on what the internet may say and just ignore it. But I just right. hate that there just might be, I don't know, that one person that sees it gets hurt yeah. by it. No, <laughs> for sure. So make me feel nice. It's ridiculous. Well, when are they going to add a best souls born category? Like, because the <laughs> genre now is almost like its own. There's enough of them now yeah. in a year where you can have that. And would Elden Ring win that? Absolutely. Of course, it will. I would not know. <laughs> of course, it will. But uh, my my question to you, Joe, is God of War Ragnarok, is it going to win Game of the Year? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh... <sighs> and of course, really... being a, place, a PlayStation podcaster, God of War Ragnarok versus Horizon Forbidden West. I mean, these are like two franchises. You got to be torn, right? Yeah, I, I am very... So, torns <laughs> in any other world, like... Any other scenario, I would be torn. But to me, so a little background, From Software is my favorite developer. I've mm. platted most of the, the From Soft games. Um, love them dearly. So for me, I'm just like, I, I got probably what is considered the best From Software title. Uh, and then I get a sequel to one of my favorite games of all time, which is God of War. So like, to me, I'm not torn. I'm like, I'm eating really well. <laughs> I'm, I am I got two of my favorite games of all time in literally one year. And to me, I actually come at it a little differently of like, so whatever I put as, you know, one on top of the other, or whatever, doesn't really matter much because they're both so fantastic. So I'm not, I'm not torn. I just feel bad for Horizon because it totally gets overshadowed by Elden Ring uh, and God of War. <laughs> God of War narratively in Elden Ring, um, you know, uh, open world wise but mm. for me it, it, i can't say what my game of the year is because we're doing our own award show it's gonna be better than jeff keely's of course mark that down jeff <laughs> <Yep. in> chat. <laughs> Bad bit way locked. better yep. guaranteed yep. um no world premieres don't be excited for that but that said um i kind of think elder ring takes it uh elder yeah. ring i think introduced so many people to the from soft kind of you know the souls born game uh that i i feel like it is also probably the most approachable out of the bunch as well so i feel like just it being able to um connect with so many people and so fast like what what was the number like 17 million in a month that's bonkers yeah, so for me I, I, I lean on Elden ring because it, it feels like it's doing a lot of things differently where if you're a from software fanatic like me, you can see that a lot of these enemies, I've fought them before. Maybe in a different pattern, or maybe a boss is, you know, in Elden Ring is like a boss from Dark Souls and one from Bloodborne mixed. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, I think that the variety, the level design, the boss encounters, there's enough there that people are going to go, that's new and different. Where God of War Ragnarok is stellar i love this game so much it offers a brilliant narrative but it's also more god of war and i don't know if 
doing or expanding on an original game is enough for whoever's voting uh, than what is seemingly doing something new and different. Um, hmm. So I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like Ragnarok's going to do what Red Dead Redemption 2 is uh, or did, where it wins pretty much every category but Game of the Year. Right. Or you just have a lot of the judges saying, well, Elden Ring will probably win, so I'll just vote Plague Tale, and then Plague Tale ends up winning it. <laughs> Dark Horse. What an, what an upset that would be. That would be so great. Right Might happen. Mm. Who knows? Yeah, I love how everybody just counts out like the, like out the other four contestants. There, it's just up to these two. <laughs> but I mean, that has oh. happened before, right? And then, like the year that uh, uh, it takes two, one, which right? was last year, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> was that last year? I mean, what was it up against? It, it wasn't supposed to win. Like you know, I think it was like Returnal. What's the other big game? It was Returnal. Last Metroid year? was in there. Ratchet Metroid. and Clank. God. Ratchet and Clank Ratchet was in there. Clank. Yeah. Yeah, I know so there's it can a big happen. One that we're missing. Oh, you it's going to end I'm up going astray. Astray <laughs> was pretty great. So, like, man. And you I know what? Talk about doing astray. something different. And you know what? I wouldn't argue. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I suppose. Oh, Death so. Loop. Sorry. Oh yeah, Death Loop. Oh yeah, was Death last Loop. Year. Uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, which which. Which of the, of this year's nominees is Jeff Keeley the closest friends with? <laughs> that's kind of what happened last year. God of War. Oh, it's okay. definitely Elden Ring, right? No, definitely. He had Pop is Boy come out there. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't follow it. Half, half Which pop, one does half Hideo man? Kojima work on? Yeah, Kojima didn't do anything <laughs> this year, did he? <laughs> sure so there's did. no easy win. <clears throat> but he'll yeah. have like a half hour's worth of trailers at the Game Awards, probably, right? Kojima? Oh, absolutely. What was that thing that leaked recently that was uh, a mobile game or something like that? Did you guys I see that know. leaked footage of people of the guy? I do with, remember that, but I don't remember what the it was. The guy without oh. a shirt on looking at <laughs> test footage of a mobile game. You could see his yes. reflection in the... Oh, jeez. Well, it watch. was... He, he was using his phone to capture footage from the rumored Kojima game. Yeah. Um, which is... A weird flex but okay uh maybe he's like that paranoid about you know getting caught that he's like i can't even wear a shirt y'all are getting full <laughs> nip that's I'm... now we all know he has a third nipple so he's either easier to identify <laughs> <laughs> there you go but yeah maybe that gets revealed there that that's like if it's going to get revealed there. anywhere it's going to get revealed yeah. in keely's show probably <laughs> yeah yes indeed all right well if we need another reason to feel old Nope. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, Xbox Live is 20 years old. Oh, my. How about that? You remember uh, buying the starter kit that had uh, yes. Revolt in it and uh, <laughs> included a headset and a little I remember. Dongle? I remember I some of our sports editors being part of the uh, the NFL. What was it? NFL Fever? I forget <clears> what their, <throat> their first part of NFL That's game right. was called. But anyway, that was... I remember that being like the first, not test, but as far as the press went, like the first um, demonstration, participation of of playing a game over Xbox Live. The Xbox Sports Network, the yes. XSN. The XSN, mm, that's right. As they called it. Damn. Yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> still have my, yeah. I still have a monogrammed uh, uh, microphone for Xbox Live. Nice. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Joe, I'm guessing you were but a wee lad and uh, did not was... participate. <laughs> no, I was right there, man. I was one of the first. Yeah, I got my little headset. I got Mech Assault, and oh, I. Wow. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I Xbox Live. My my first username. We used a, a user generated one because we didn't think that far ahead that we had to get usernames. Was War Like Coffee. Was War Like game. Coffee. That's right. <laughs> that's right that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh no, i have a lot of great memories man mm. xbox live even as a wee lad there's just like i rem i remember countless countless hours being lost to halo 2 which i still think oh, is yeah. probably where xbox live peaked <laughs> yeah <laughs> peaked. not wow. it, wow i think it was not its uno? First major. come on uno <laughs> 
No, who, who knows? It's very 16. problematic. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You know, but yeah, no, I, I have great memories of it. And still so much work needs to be done on the curation yeah. end of things. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm, definitely. Oh, my God. I so the war being... zone match I was just in is like case in point. <laughs> well, there needs to be a lot done. Are you talking about verbal? Uh, oh my god! Yeah. Sort of what you hear from other players during yeah. the match? Yeah, because like as as a kid, I am afraid that Xbox Live molded me to be the man I am today, which is just with a lot That's of an regret. awfully mean thing to say about yourself. Yeah. I know. <laughs> well, I like, think about this, guys. Like when Xbox Live came out, I was in middle school. So just imagine. You, 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 listen, you will not be invited back. <laughs> <laughs> I was in college. Does that help? There you go. That's there you go. There we are. Yeah. Little, little better. <laughs> yeah. But, like the things you hear and you say. Oh my God! There's just so much regret. Well, but, speaking as a yeah. parent, that that's I worry about that all the time. Yeah, with with my kids playing online, like you know, we yeah. like, try to make sure that they're not in like a group chat. They do private chats with their friends. The crazy thing is that it's so prevalent. Mm. It's not like it is. You it's, go into a game and maybe you'll hear it. It's like <laughs> yep, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear it, depending on the type of game you're playing, of course. And it, yeah. and w- when it comes to Warzone, like they got the the proximity chat, and like I was just in a game because like. I'm using proximity chat to hear these fools while I'm in a party chat with, with my buddies and, and Luke just, Luke just happens to be there. Um, and like, there was one part where I'm like, wow. I'm hearing so many N words being dropped. It's literally all I'm hearing. Yeah. And I'm like, this is, this is too much. And that's why like coming at it from like a, a parent, I can't even imagine how you even curate it for your child. Mm-hmm. You know, like you don't. That's just it. There's that you know, outside of just locking it down. There's not really much you can do. Yeah. Right. <sighs> I mean, educate them and hope for the best. That's exactly <laughs> it. You have to educate them and hope for the best. Yeah. 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 But going back to what we were originally talking about, yeah, good memories, anniversary of live. <laughs> I remember like, because, um, you know, most of us oldsters here, we're playing games online on the Dreamcast. Yeah. I know CJ, yeah. you and I spent a ton of time playing, especially Absolutely. Speed Devils online yeah. on the Dreamcast. Yeah. But it was like live was like that next step, right? Like it, it felt like it was the difference between like dialing into a to a a, a bulletin board and then actually getting on the internet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. it was it was kind of like that leap. It's like you're getting things like live leaderboards popping. I remember I think Project Gotham Racing 2 was one of the situations where like even if you weren't playing online, like you'd finish a race and the first thing that would appear was like a live leaderboard and where you were in association to like your friend uh, your friends list as far as like how you did on that that thing. Like you weren't the race wasn't online, but you were constantly online and you were constantly getting updates and like that was a whole other level from what mm-hmm. we been used to on on console online games because with dreamcast was great but it was like you know um download pictures and turn them into graffiti and jack grind radio like it was it was that level it wasn't you know yeah you didn't have voice chat on everything you weren't constantly on always online and it know, was weird it was, and it was really cool yeah, yeah exactly you were it felt like you were sort of on the frontier with that console yeah. but with xbox live it felt like a total package yeah, and if you played Uno, you saw the total package multiple times. So <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> thank God, thank God, uh, I was I never went to Uno. I just Uno was a lot of fun, it. but it was yeah. Uno was fun. I don't think I ever saw anybody on camera though that was showing. You weren't playing enough. Dangling participle. <laughs> Did you not play against me? <laughs> <laughs> Well, those cameras were they they weren't very high resolution, Phil. It was hard. That, well, that worked right. in my favor. <laughs> <laughs> Phil wore his camera on his belt. <laughs> somehow the image was smaller than uh, things would actually appear. Is that an <laughs> any? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, to change the subject. Um, you know, for me as a kid, it just felt like the next step. Mm-hmm. Well, being integrated with all this tech, I never had that like, oh my God, what I'm doing right here is crazy. Like I didn't have like that introspective moment. Yeah. I was just like, no, this is just how I'm hanging out with my friends. 
Like, and it, it was very was different on the PlayStation yeah. and Sony side at that time because the the modem uh, for the PlayStation was like an extra peripheral. And same with GameCube, right? You had to buy those yeah. things separately. So it wasn't as pervasive as it was on the Xbox yeah. where you just plugged in the Ethernet cord and there you went. It really set the standard. I mean, it set standards that, you know, we still they still follow today. So it's true. Yeah, we like in, in the reputation, like at least to me, when I look at Xbox, it is you're the multiplayer machine. Mm-hmm. And I think it's been that way for me, at least since the OG Xbox, since Halo 2. Um, they've just. But they, Joe, they if Xbox of controls Call of Duty, then uh, <sighs> Sony won't be able to compete. I mean, that's what I mean, that's what Jim Ryan has written to me with his little <laughs> letters he's sending me and the ink is his tears. And it's it's cool. It's like a decoder ring that you read across it. I know it's gonna be nuts. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Do do you think do you think the uh, Activision Blizzard acquisition is gonna go through? Absolutely, but with caveats. I yeah. like, and I feel I feel like I've since the beginning. I'm like, there's no way you rip this game out from a from yeah. a platform of millions, tons of millions of people. Oh, and, and there's, for sure. There's no, no way, way Microsoft you... would do that. No, anyway. I mean, like, just commercially, it doesn't make sense for them. Uh, and then just, I mean, their reputation would kind of just go in the gutter at that point because you're just, you're screwing over millions of people that don't care about the whole console war jargon. They just want to play Call of Duty. And yeah. it seems a bit, yeah, a, a little bit much. Whereas so, if you leave it on PlayStation and require an Xbox Live login at some point down the line, you could get these people into the ecosystem. And I think and... that's what the, I think that's what originally it was going to be. Yeah. I, th- I, I, the way I saw it was originally, you know, Phil's just like, okay, here's this offer. And then after that offer passes, we'll talk about it. You know, maybe we put first it on is free. pass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, first yeah. hits for free. And then uh, maybe you need an Xbox live login. Maybe you need game pass or whatever. Like the caveats, like we put, you know, game pass on PlayStation, whatever it is. And whatever that deal was, Jim Ryan was unsettled by it and didn't mm-hmm. trust it and has now gone full bore to kill it. And I think the interesting thing in all of this is how not to say desperate Microsoft s- sounds, but how just a month ago they're like, hey, we're competing. And now it's just like, listen, we will give you this game for 10 years. <laughs> like, do, wait, do you think it's Microsoft who sounds desperate or do you think it's Sony that's I, I think grasping there's... at straws with the latest thing that they said, uh, well, if this merger goes through or the acquisition goes through, yeah. game they could raise game prices and raise the price <laughs> of their console. <laughs> yeah, Jim Ryan says a lot of wild stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, I, I, I don't read through the details. What I what I see is I I feel like this is a little a little existential for Microsoft, very existential for Sony, um, and very existential for for Activision Blizzard, where you know, if Activision if this deal doesn't go through, somehow Jim Ryan, you know, pulls the ace out of his sleeve. All of a sudden, Activision is now in panic mode because they don't have that, you know, that parent company coming in to restructure the organization to put people in place to help, you know, those pipelines go through. Hmm. Right. So all of a sudden, Call of Duty's in trouble again, and they got to scramble to go find a partner. Um, so that's my big issue. It's like n- nothing, none of the changes we want happens if this deal doesn't go through it's existential for Sony because Sony knows they can't compete acquisition wise on the level of Microsoft. And they're worried that Microsoft isn't going to stop with Activision because they've hinted that they're not going to stop with Activision. So they're looking at this going, well, we need to secure for our shareholders that we can actually tame this, this piece that is Microsoft. So it's very existential for Sony. Um, and and we saw it with the the Bethesda deal. That was one of the things that scared off Google. They're like, "Oh, we were not expecting you to compete on this level. I think we're good." So I think it's very existential for for Sony, just shareholders wise. And I think it's a little existential for Xbox because if this deal doesn't go through to them, well, now their idea of how to build this 
Game Pass ecosystem has to drastically change. You know, I saw a lot of people like, you know, Sony, you, you should want this deal to go through because Microsoft's going to buy everybody else if you can't buy Activision Blizzard. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think that's how it works at all. Mm-hmm. I think now they have to reevaluate how they look at what their place is for games. Because if they can't buy this company and become the fourth largest, you know, game publisher, whatever the, the mantra is, well, now they're now they're in not in trouble because they're doing great, but they're questioning how they can compete Mm -hmm. because the market regulators won't let them. So what happens then? And so that that's another, I feel like question that a lot of people are asking. And that's where, where I think is this is an existential problem for all three entities here, Mm -hmm. but for different reasons, if that makes any sense, Ted talk over. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, I think it'll be interesting to see how a lot of Microsoft's bets even play out. Like, they bought a lot of studios that have yet to actually produce any games post-Microsoft acquisition, right? And I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens with Starfield and, you know, whatever Obsidian is doing next and whatever Bethesda is doing next and uh, how all of that plays out. And if the Game Pass model can work... And I think it can without without Activision Blizzard as part of it. I think it can, but I think they want to. I think Activision Blizzard's the accelerant to making that mm. oh, blow for sure. up the way that they want it to. Um, yeah, and, and and for me, it, it's also interesting. I love the language both of them are using because for a while we're like PlayStation, you do a whole bunch of this as well, like you did a Final Fantasy VII <laughs> remake, and then. You know, Xbox coming out when asked about uh, Elder Scrolls was just like, yeah, maybe we make it an exclusive because that's a mid tier. It's not going to really affect PlayStation. It's like, right. oh, <laughs> but, but Call of Duty's in the Southern <clears throat> sector. Don't worry, we won't touch it. But does so, this mean that Sea of Thieves is coming to PlayStation? That's, I hope, that's really mm. the important question. I hope. I pray. I want to play yeah. Sea of Thieves <laughs> on my dual sense. I mean, I think if Minecraft wasn't hadn't already demonstrated that Microsoft can have a huge franchise, but also keep it on multiple platforms. I think there would be more skepticism as, as to if they could do this with call of duty. I think they have proven they can do it with Minecraft. I never would have thought that they would like when that acquisition happened. Uh, So I, I guess we'll see. I think, I think you're right. I think it'll go through with caveats Yeah, and we'll just have to see what that is. And I, and I think the the way that Microsoft strategy is, it's just like, let the publishers be publishers. And, you know, we don't have to have Matt Booty watch over all these studios. We could have, you know, people, um, oh my God, name's escaping me, but what is it? Pete Hines from like Bethesda, you know, start mm-hmm. looking over, you know, the Bethesda stuff and whoever's at that level at Blizzard and Activision can do that as well. So I yeah. want this to go through because I want leadership to change at Activision Blizzard. And sadly, the only way to go about it is with golden parachutes. But I want those people yeah. out. And I, to be yeah. honest, I'll be very disappointed if, you know, we see those high ranking folks at Activision stay in power after yeah. everything's said and done. Very true. Very true. Well, uh speaking of just the xbox ecosystem and xbox live being 20 years old hyperkin is bringing back the xbox 360 controller oh really that style (laughs) of controller (laughs) they they previously brought back the duke they did which i didn't i didn't buy a revised duke no i have i honestly have no nostalgia for the duke now I do. You do? It's, it's, yeah, I, I, I have the Duke. I love the Duke. <laughs> the Duke. It's, it's just, it's too much. It's too much controller. I know. I know. And I don't know why I love it as much as I do, but <laughs> I feel home on that controller. The white and black buttons. Remember those little gems? I do remember that. Yeah. Yes. As Awful soon as the buttons. controller type S came out, I bought that and was uh, yeah. mm-hmm. super happy with that. <laughs> And before that, I had a Mad Cat's controller that was just a little bit smaller than the Duke. That was nice, yes. but uh, yes. but I, I won't I won't be buying a revised 360 controller. But I thought it was interesting Why? that they're bringing it back. Why not? 
Because I, I, I mean, it's not that different, right? Yeah, I was gonna say the current controller really feels like an evolution it is. of the 360 controller. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I mean, cool, I guess. <laughs> can I just say something wild, crazy, and people yell at me probably for it? Go ahead. 360 is their best controller. You think what? This, uh, the nostalgia of that controller has gotten mm. to me mm. in ways I can't describe. I'm trying to look at the Hyperkin right now to see if there is um, like the battery pack behind it. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was the only yeah, problem with God. that controller is the dumb battery pack behind it. But like, there's just something about that controller to me. When I hold it, it feels like it's home. It's nice. Mm. Um, there's something about those analog sticks that get really grimy too easily. But to me, one of That's my true. favorite 360s controllers was uh, the D-pad that, like, you twist it, and it and it's like a normal D-pad, and then you twist it again, it's the dome. You guys see this? Wait, was that a white? What? Huh? Yeah, it was like a silver 360 controller, uh-huh. but it was kind of module. Like, you, like the D-pad, you just twist it, and it's the original 360 crappy D-pad, and then oh. you twist it back, and it's like the strict, you know, up, down, left, oh, right. Oh, interesting. Mm. Yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah, hmm. I got a lot of fond memories with it. I know. I listen. We got you know Luke in the chat who says a lot of crazy things, uh, and I don't like him at all. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, saying that the Elite Two is awesome, but there's just something about the 360 controller. I just love it so much. Okay, all right. I like the current uh, Xbox controller. The current I don't one's have strong nice. feelings about any of them. No, no. no? More of a dual shock mm. guy, personally. Dual shock. There yeah. you go. There you go. I'm the type of mm. psycho and real sicko, actually. That like, first off, there's, I mean, dual sense right here. Best yeah. controller ever made. Yeah. But yeah. I can go to an Xbox controller and a PlayStation. I could switch between both of them and nothing happens. But yeah, if same. I try to play, yeah, a, a lot of people are like, oh, the analog placement. I'm like, doesn't matter. Why? It's, yeah, n- doesn't matter no. at all. No, get that out of your head. But if I try to play like a from software game, it has to be on PlayStation. Hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you have to have those triggers? Yeah, there's something about the muscle memory uh, more Mm -hmm. than anything. Like, I feel like if I play that on an Xbox controller, I'd get sick. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All righty. Well, that is the end of the news because nothing else really happened in the last two weeks. Let's face I love it. that you said almost nothing happened, and we've been doing news now for an hour. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, we talked about some other things in that hour. Only 42 minutes, according to this uh, clock I'm looking at. All right, but it is time to get to what you've been playing. And Joe, we're going to start with you, sir. Oh, man, where do I go? Where do I go? I've played uh, and beaten and platinumed God of War Ragnarok, ladies and gentlemen. All oh. right. That's a video. You platinum game. did. Did you have to yeah. play through twice, or did you do it on your first uh, first run run through? First run. Uh, I I really do like how PlayStation's been like approaching trophies. It's a beat the game, clear out some of the extra stuff, just have fun. Very much what Ragnarok is. It's just like you don't even need to do everything. Mm-hmm. It's like just do what we think is the coolest stuff. Um, big shout out that though there are Odin's ravens. I don't think that's tied to a trophy uh-huh thank god but go ahead and do it uh mm-hmm. <laughs> fun stuff happens if you do mm-hmm. but uh yeah god of war ragnarok to me um i asked the question to uh, my buddy who reviewed it um steve vargi from console creatures and I, I i asked him the question i was like does this feel like godfather one to godfather two like where it's just a mm-hmm. good you know it's it's a it, it's the the probably one of the best sequels where it's not as good as the original right it's not as memorable but damn does it hit some of the best beats that a sequel could wish for and Mm -hmm. while playing it and beating it and although to me story elements felt stronger in 2018 it definitely felt like this was the godfather part two where it, it it uncovered more backstory from characters that we knew characters evolved in this time, but they evolved in the, the right way. Um, side characters get 
you know, a bit more backstory. They get a lot more relevance in this story. Um, and new characters that jump in are incredibly welcomed. So, you know, Odin, Thor, those are two highlights. But there's certain other Aesir gods that are complete pieces of <laughs> shit. That... <laughs> did the blue button work? Does it... it did. It worked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that are awesome you, 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 you love that you hate them um and it it just advances the story and ends the story on something that just feels good like godfather wow. part two did where i try to say that part three never happened it just ends at part two <laughs> it's perfect um and combat wise it is to me the best uh you know way of uh, evolving that game where this does feel like this is it this is the definitive version of the god of war experience when it comes to combat the things that they introduce the abilities that you're mix and matching feels rhythmic it feels it feels really punchy and when you get to learn combos when you're mix matching all the weapons together um it's it just feels when you're able to chain combos so damn rewarding so to me this is a very worthy sequel i've loved every minute of it and i keep thinking about it afterwards mm. of just how complete it felt mm. which you don't get a lot of in a triple a game nowadays yeah you know does this I, have a new game plus not Do yet no? but i will be playing that new game plus for sure okay okay yeah so is it more open world than the first game or way more? Uh, more? So they introduce, you know, the first game's just Midgard. This one's mm-hmm. the nine realms. Most of the realms have a, not say most, a good portion of them have an overworld that you go to it's like akin to like an ocarina of time, right? Oh, this is okay. your big central hub world. Go to these branching paths. There's activities to, to be had there. Um, and there's a lot of really excellent side stories. I feel like we often, when, we're, when talking about like, oh, this is a good side story, this is a good side quest, we have to match it to something. I, I saw some people go like, this is like better than The Witcher 3. Don't go in with any expectation. Hmm. I doubt it's better than The Witcher 3, though I haven't completed <laughs> Witcher 3 myself. Um, <laughs> but they're really good. They tell some really great stories. It's more, yeah. less Witcher 3, 3, think more like Ghost of Tsushima where you're filling out Mm. side characters arcs and because you're taking the time to discover more about that character, they become a more whole character because of it. Um, Okay. So there, there, there are reasons why they do X, Y, or Z in the main game or main story that, that makes sense to you. So I really dig some of the side missions that you're, you're doing. Okay. Cool. Cool. I have not started it yet. Same. I played a little of it. Yeah. God dang. <laughs> and like that's the thing with this game. Um, you know, I can't I, I don't want to say almost anything because I want y'all to experience it. So it's like just take my word for it. It's worth it. Is there some pacing issues? Absolutely. This is the PlayStation mm-hmm. first party, after all. Uh, so there's gonna be some pacing issues. Is there maybe a little bit too much climbing? absolutely oh so but, it's breath of the wild well, let's, <laughs> Greg, let's not get crazy <laughs> there was a breath of the wild moment though like uh i really like god forbid it rained while i was climbing that oh would make it god so no <laughs> <laughs> but honestly like there you know sometimes when a game gets a little long in the tooth you know mm-hmm. akin to like the last of us part two you're like how many hours could have shaved off of this to make this feel better paced? Whereas God of War feels like I could have taken maybe, maybe a good 40 minutes out of this game to, to give it a little uh, bit more uh, brevity, but mm. it's a dense game on purpose. Cause it's covering so much and shout out as a person that likes mythology, a great deal in history, a great deal. They do a really phenomenal job covering how these gods actually were while giving it enough like wiggle room to add a Greek God in there to, to mess everything up. 
um, they do a fantastic job, at least getting, I think, the essence of the North mythology uh, or characters to a T. There's little subtle things they do, too, that you're like, oh, yeah, that God also did that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, this is an incredible game, but you've heard it over and over again. Go out there, try it, and yell at me if you don't like it, which some people yeah. have done. <laughs> I see. Oh I see. Oh. So, have you been playing anything else? You got uh, Ragnarok done, and I've been playing a lot of Warzone, uh, yeah. or, or quite a quite a bit of it. Platinumed, <laughs> humble brag, guys. I'm pretty much like an MLG player now because I platinumed Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 because I enjoyed it that much. <laughs> um, Warzone feels really big, maybe sometimes too big. Because there's a lot of downtime, but once half the teams get eliminated, after I think like the second wave where the gas comes in, um, in the circles, the cool thing that this battle royale does, I, I, I don't know much of the original Warzone, but after like the third wave, the circle wave, it actually breaks the circles up into three circles and they all start to converge into one circle. Oh, so it forces all the teams to just converge in the middle and it just becomes pure chaos um and what i learned a slew of n words just being used and just so much <laughs> oh my goodness uh, but if you could get past the proximity chat uh there's a there's a lot of fun here there's there, there's something here that definitely could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the more wholesome uh fortnite though i still prefer fortnite uh because at least i feel good in that game <laughs> yeah but a lot, a lot of that, and I've been playing a little bit of Plague Tale as well, as I'm getting ready to talk about my games of years. Uh, Plague Tale, I love the original. This seems mm -hmm. so far more of it, and uh, I'm down for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Cool. Or grander, mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. All right, uh, Phil. Yes. What have you been playing, sir? Well, the bulk of my time this week was spent playing a game for work, mm, so yeah. I won't go into that. Well, but it's work related. You don't want to talk about work things during your. I want to talk about work stuff. Free time uh, yeah. during during my yeah, <clears throat> this is my personal time. Yeah. Uh, you know what I did pick up though, for the Nintendo Switch this week. Yeah. It was a game that I don't know if you may not have even heard of this. Uh, it is called McPixel Three. Uh-huh. Are you familiar with McPixel? It. No. Okay. Tell us, Phil. So McPixel is well the, the original is it a McDonald's McPixel... game because it sure sounds yeah. like it. <laughs> is this the sequel to Treasureland Adventure that we've all is this been the waiting thing for? They finally dethroned Sneak King. <laughs> no. No. You're there giving us Scottish a look of people derision. in the world. CJ, <laughs> you're looking at us. Not everyone derision here. I not see. everyone with a Mick in their name. No, is related to your favorite dining establishment. I'm sorry. Now this is uh, I was this just is in the Mick. This is, what? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so this so so this is it's it's a weird game. <laughs> yeah, and. And and it stretches the definition of game uh, to the breaking point, which is the kind of thing I like. You know that. You know, like I, I you know, I like the weird, stupid sure. crap. Sure. Uh, this is uh, this is the other. Uh, there there was no Mc, Mc, McPixel two. You yeah. know, it's like they're doing the like goat simulator thing where it's like, <laughs> oh no, no, there's a yeah, and it's like you know, Legion suit Larry beat you to that years decades ago. ago. You can give up that gag now. Yeah, but but. Uh, what this game feels like and what the original one felt like, uh, which, you know, I enjoyed the original one. I played it on Steam years ago. Um, it feels like a kind of a spiritual successor to uh, Panic, if you remember Panic. Oh, yeah. For the, the Sega, Sega CD. CD. Yeah. Where it is, pretty sure, technically a game, but also kind of not really a game and more just a series of interconnected gags, gags. Yeah. that you mm -hmm. sort of trigger yeah you just sort of you hit buttons and see what happens and occasionally the right thing will happen and you get to progress 
Okay. So it's that kind of game. You're playing it on the Nintendo Switch. I'm playing it on the Nintendo Switch. Is it available on uh, the Valve uh, Steam? It is available for personal computers on the Steam Store. Okay. I don't know if it's on the Epic's, Epic's Games stores. Wait, Epic's is still around? Epic's is, yeah. They make Fortnite <laughs> and World Games. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So pick your poison. But yeah, so it's it, it is. It's just it's a it's a goofy, just random. You're thrown into a situation, mm-hmm. and you can interact with different objects on the screen. And you have to the the goal is to uh, help the main character, the titular McPixel, uh, survive by interacting with objects around him, and some of them will will kill you some of them will kill other people mm-hmm. some of them will create some sort of random ridiculous scenario that you could not have expected there's a lot of poop jokes oh that's right up your alley yeah so alley <laughs> there it is okay so here's that's a, what i've been playing question. here's a question yes? for you phil yes i feel like a lot of people when talking about the switch yes talking about how games run on the switch Oh, How does this game run on the Switch? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it runs fine. <laughs> it runs fine. <laughs> it's, it's, you're not concerned about performance. You're concerned about inter- entertainment. How yeah, much is fine. this game entertaining me? It runs fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, yeah. You, you know what? Uh, you know what else I've been playing what's, this week? What's that? My analog pocket. Ah, oh. my analog pocket showed up after after a good solid year of waiting. Uh, I got that. I got the dock for it, and I you got, got a my, bunch of adapters. I got. I only got one adapter because oh, there's only did? one that's oh. out right now. I got the old Game Gear adapter. I right thought here. I saw multiple boxes wow. in your Twitter picture. Yes. You did. Those did not contain it. Well, one of them contained an adapter. Okay, this, adapter, this one. <laughs> Game Gear adapter, the only okay. one that's out now. Okay. I see. The other boxes. Let me tell you what was in those boxes. Tell me. Run it down. You, you got your system. Boom. The analog gotcha. pocket. Handheld. Yeah. Handheld yeah. system. Yeah. Uh, the dock. Okay. The yeah, dock. Let's do right there. You plug your two. system into that. Yep. That plugs into your televised vision set. Uh-huh. And that lets you play your portable games on the big screen. Oh. Okay. You got boom, your game gear adapter. Boom. Right. You plug that in. Boom. You play your game gear games. Boom. That's three boxes. Yeah. Fourth box. Oh. Fourth box. The tempered glass screen protector. Not necessary. You slap that. <laughs> you know what else is what do you, necessary? What do, you get, what do you get a cleaning kit with with it too? Do you, you don't like kit? you don't like screen protectors on your systems. You don't like having your screens don't. remain uh, free from scratches and harm. No, I'm not. A, I'm not. Yeah, no. Well, that's I don't purchase screen protectors. You know what else you don't purchase is, is cleaning clean out your dryer lint. No wonder. <laughs> no wonder your life's a mess. You don't clean out your dryer lint. You don't protect uh, your screens. Oh, right. I guess you're right. So boom, you got that box the fifth. Yeah. I'm looking at a clear protective case. Oh, you Ooh. bought that, didn't you? I really? The... Why? Why? Wow, they really gouged you, Phil. Right? You don't <laughs> you don't store your what do you do with your portable no. system, CJ? You just throw them around? Yeah. You throw you just throw them in your backpack? Yeah. yeah. We're gonna take a look at this case. We're gonna take a look at this case. I'm gonna... No, I actually, do, I do, I do have a case. For this is my this Switch. is this is why you end up buying like fifty Game Boys because you destroy them all. No, I've, five I have boxes cases there, CJ. Look, look, let me let's count these down again. Mm, please. The system, okay. The That's dock. Let's do. Yep. We got the Game Gear adapter. Let's see the joke. Let's do it. We got the screen protector. <laughs> there it is. There it is. And then finally. You got that protective case right there. Should have have expected it. (laughs) There you go. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Okay. So I got my analog pocket. You did. What color did you get it? White or black? Uh, I got the black. I always bet I on black. I feel like that's the only co- – yeah, that's that's the only choice. I think white gets discolored way too quick. It's going to get discolored. Theory. Also, you know what? I don't I don't want to be staring at a at a at a glaring white brick while yeah. I'm playing my games. Yep. You know? Sure. Give me that smooth black surface, a nice dark bezel around my screen. That's what I need. Yep. So I got that. I got the dock hooked up. Boy, oh boy, that thing is nice. Oh yeah. yeah? I don't know what you've heard. But the analog pocket's nice. It's real pretty. Mm. And you can switch between, they have all the graphical modes on there. Mm. So you can have it, you can just have it look, you know, just, there's just the raw pixels on there. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's fine if that's what you want. You can, you can throw it on a, uh, you know, if you're playing the, your, your black and white Game Boy games, you can have it the, the pea soup colors. Okay. You can have it the, 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 uh, the, the black and white that looks more like the, uh, the Game Boy pocket. Yeah. Colors. You can have it uh, where it looks like it's the Game Boy Light. You remember the that glow, one? That wasn't even glow, released yeah. here in the in the West. That's right. You know, and if you're playing a GBA games, you can have the yeah. You know, the, the again, just the boom here. Here's the GBA, the pixels, boom, just just like just plain, plain boom, style. Pixels. Yeah. Okay. Or you can have it look like uh, the original model, or you can have it look like the uh, what is it, the one hundred and one? Is it the the flip the flip lid? The flippity flop, yeah. With the with the, with the uh, front light on it, where uh-huh. it looked real nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's real pretty. Okay. So, yeah, I'm delighted yeah. with it. I was been I was playing. Uh, hey, you tell yeah. me. Take a guess. What was the first game I played on my analog? Uh, pocket Ur- Urban Yeti. Urban Yeti, the CJ. I'm gonna say Mr. Driller, uh, Game Boy Color. Mr. Driller for Game Boy Color. Joseph, what was the first game I played? I know what would be the first game I play is Backyard Baseball. <laughs> nice, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Did any of us get it right? You're yeah. all wrong. <laughs> You're all wrong. Mega Man. Super Mario Land. Oh. Oh, okay. Good choice, though. I mean, come Very on. Choice. <clears throat> Super Mario Land. I think that was the first game I played on the original Game Boy back in the day. Not Tetris? Oh, Not cool. Tetris? I think Super Mario Land was the first game I played on the Game Boy back in the day. <laughs> Why Not, Not Tetris? Tetris? Go ahead and do it again. Because I wanted to play Mario. Oh, Okay. Let's see, but Tet- Tetris is so good. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's not. Okay. I mean, Gravity Rush is a really good game too, but that I didn't play that on my Game Boy back then either. Yeah, but it wasn't out. No. That's not a comparison <laughs> at all. Well, the, there you go. Yeah. One doesn't dis- disprove the other. <sighs> <sighs> you guys make this so, so difficult. That's, that's all you played. <laughs> That no, it? that was the first thing I played. Oh, okay. This? It's the end? What is this narrative you have going on in your head? <laughs> I mean, I'm delighted you're sharing it with us. Yeah. But uh, you, you know what else, though? You know what I ended up playing a, a fair bit of? What? On the, uh, on the big screen is uh, Extra Drill Seven. Dozer. Did you ever play that Drill Dozer? That's a good game. Drill Dozer is a yeah. very good game. It's a lot of fun, and it looks... I mean, it looked great on the GBA. Boy, does it look really nice. On a nice blown old. up on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to end up playing through Drill Dozer again. I haven't played through that game in a, in a, in a day and a half, so mm. I'm looking forward to going through it again. I see. I got a question for you, Phil. As someone who, again, passerby when it comes to all this, all this stuff, the analog... The, the analog pocket is the first retro bit of gear that looks fantastic and looks like something i'd be into how are you playing it docked like is there like a special controller that comes with it you can hook up any old like usb controller to it how's it work joseph i'm glad you asked oh thank god okay 
I'm not really sure. I didn't actually play at docked. I was hoping no one would say anything. <laughs> oh, dang it. I'm sorry. I called you now, <laughs> hang on your now, face. wait, we just uh, talked uh, about Drill Dozer on your OLED. Just, yeah, uh, I lied. Oh, CJ, oh, I lied God. for the show to make myself wow, seem cool. Dang it. dang it. No, I lied about lying. Okay. The truth is. Oh, wow. You really threw us through a, a loop. Wow. It's like Inception. It's an actor. I bought this it. Code's bought wild it. ride. I don't know why Greg Very bothered going to Disney. Slow, inexorable journey. Uh, <laughs> it supports it supports Bluetooth controllers. Okay. And um, it, uh, it, it's uh, you know like if so if you have like one of those like uh, eight bit dough controllers, you can no you can do it with that. Uh, you can uh, you can sync up uh, uh, Xbox controller. You can sync up. I was playing it with the. Uh, uh, is is it DualShock Four? Is a PS4 okay. controller? Okay, yeah, yeah DualShock yeah. Four, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can just you can just uh, any any Bluetooth controller like that. Okay. Press of a button and boom, boom, boom. Very nice. So, yeah, I might actually invest in these one of these days. It's yeah, yeah, one of these get one eventually. It's yeah. it, it's worth getting if you have uh, if you have an interest in playing portable uh, games. And I, you know, I know. You know, you you know they have all the adapters coming out. Uh, I have those ordered as well. What is the Neo Geo, the Lynx, and the Turbo Graphics, which I'm very oh I'm excited to have a little portable Turbo Graphics. Oh man, secretly the best portable system from back in the nineties. Yeah, I I you know I Turbo never Express. had, I never had a Turbo Express, but boy did I want one. Mm. So, Always wanted a Game Gear as a kid. Always. Ah. Oh. Uh. I got one. I mean, I have a, I have an old Game Gear as well, but the uh, you can play it on there. I mean, I can't play my old Game Gear right now because the the capacitor is just melted, you know. But I got a fine replacement nowadays. So yeah, it's 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 definitely worth investing in if you are looking to play us. And man, because there's a lot of good GBA games too. Yeah, yeah, it's a great system. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yep, I am delighted with my analog pocket. So, excellent. That's what I've have been playing. All righty. Well, I've been playing some video games too, you guys. No way. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I've been playing Vampire Survivors. I've been playing the hell out of this game. And I had played it on the, Steam uh, before. That's like Dark Stalkers, right? No. Night no, Warriors. That's not, that's not correct. No. Are you playing as Morrigan? Nope. The saucy vampire lady? Nope. Felicia. Nope. Felicia, the the fearsome kitty lady. Nope. Meow. <laughs> nope. Are you playing as this Dimitri? Is, uh, the is, villainous is... Draculas? Nope. Still no. No. Nope. Oh god. We've been playing uh, as no, this is uh... Johnny Fish, the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> Come yeah, here for the video game Fish. talk. You stay for the animosity that's building in this friendship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> been there friendship. for years. Yeah. Anyway, well, Mr. Uh, Mummy. Yeah, vampires... <laughs> See, this is the problem with fi- with skipping a week <laughs> because <laughs> Phil had no outlet for this last week. <laughs> no outlet. <laughs> I'm built up. Right. Yeah. Yep. I've been holding it in for too long. Yikes. Mm hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, Vampire Survivors. This is that game that has spawned a new genre: Bullet Heaven. It's a Bullet mm, Heaven what? game. They're calling it Bullet <laughs> Heaven. Why is it Bullet <laughs> Heaven and not Bullet? Hell? It's not Bullet Hell. I'm way bullet too old heaven. for these conversations. <sighs> <laughs> What's a Bullet no. Heaven game, CJ? Oh, uh, it's a game where you avoid bullets. Doesn't sound like my kind but of game. Let me isn't tell that you. what a isn't that what a Bullet, bullet hell, hell is? Shooter, yeah, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Uh, except this, I think, has the positive reinforcement of a cookie clicker type uh, game, or your adventure capitalist type game, where you're always getting level ups and choosing power ups to select, and you're watching a number go, go watching a go number up. go up, and then also Sounds watching the awful. number of enemies that attack you on the screen go up and up and up. So it's like Igaruga, hmm. but there's like a little counter on the side of the screen, just like constantly moving up. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I got to sneeze in a second, so I'm gonna uh-uh. do it, man. It. Don't Think mute it. That for a second. Don't no, mute I, it. The garlic yep. is the garlic is you know talking about. 
Vampire that. Survivor? Look at that. He muted it? it. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, I, you don't have to excuse you. You muted it. I did, in fact, sneeze. It's still okay. good manners to I just, say excuse me. I mean, I, I can just, see the little I moisture dots on your screen there. We paid oh, extra for that uh, shit. Now you made himself conscious. And now he had a second one. Uh-oh. Round two. No. No, false alarm. <laughs> false alarm. <laughs> No, Vampire Survivors is a bullet heaven game. Yes, you avoid yeah. enemies and uh, try to get in hits. They, the dead enemies he, he, sometimes leave these little orbs that you collect, and then you collect enough of them as as in like a cookie clicker type thing to level up. And then you select from three or four different uh, new powers or powering this, up your existing abilities, and you get more and more powerful, and the enemies that come on the screen get more and more powerful until uh, the inevitable end of everything hey, greg greg this yeah. just this just sounds like a shooter right he keeps describing a bullet hell shooter right right yeah yeah except this you don't actually it's not dual stick you only uh you only uh have bullet hell a controller stick? no bullet hells are not dual I, dual sticks you don't, you don't need to press any buttons just the analog just moving around so it's got out it's a it's an auto fire the auto, bullet fire. Is auto fire Game, the thing yeah. that's interesting because like CJ, what is exactly the hook here? Because you're the only hook is the leveling the up, leveling up, and the numbers getting better and better, Iron and Iron. that is the hook. Radiant Silver Gun, yes. That's because, okay. like on paper, I don't know Sounds if I, I'm into hell. this. Right? You take a look <laughs> at it, you're like, this is. I mean, this is. I don't know, quaint. Maybe is the word, but then people are like, I am. I've been playing this for five hours straight. It's like, what? It's I've like, been playing it for days straight. Yeah, at this yeah. at this point, <laughs> on uh, on Xbox Cloud Gaming, and uh, yeah, it's super fun, super addictive. If you get once you get into the loop, and Phil, I know you are a, an addict when it comes to the cookie clicker, seeing numbers go up, type of uh, video game. Yeah, but I really hate Bullet Hell. <laughs> and changing not really, this is what you're describing, not. and changing part of that name doesn't make it not a bullet hell you should still try it because it's free on game pass <laughs> and on steam it's only like what two or three bucks so you should give well, it a try anyway very valuable <laughs> clearly <laughs> clearly you're busy playing drill dozer and uh right. super, so uh, you're done with super mario land that takes like 10 minutes i didn't actually finish i just played through the first level of oh of mario land i see i see well mario land's so good it is. This that one has soundtrack? sprites that look like Castlevania, though. Huh? Vampire Survivors has sprites that look like Castlevania. Enemies. I could just play Castlevania. I have a Why bunch of great Castlevania games I can play on my analog pocket. Yeah, but are they bullet heaven games? No, no. they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> is there a whole genre named after the game? No, clearly not. Named after Castlevania? <laughs> 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 exactly <laughs> all right so vampire survivors it's uh free on game pass give it a try i've been addicted to it and i think i'm like uh almost done unlocking all of the little uh power-ups that you buy with gold the gold that you have amassed in the game so i've been playing uh, quite a bit okay anyway i've also been playing fortnite because that game. game is really good and yeah. it remains good. And I have voice chat it. turned off on everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't have to hear anything. I just can enjoy it <laughs> and do my little. Uh, well, now I can do the uh, Numa Numa dance uh, when I win because they added that as an emote to the, uh, to the game. Does it actually play the song? It does. Oh, look at <laughs> that. <laughs> you sit oh. down in a chair and you do the the whole thing. Oh, yeah. it's it's like full on the. Wow, the, the dude, the, the, the dude, yeah, the, exactly. The Numa Numa guy, the Numa Numa guy, specifically doing that. Yes, does he get That's money for this? Doing. I assume I he know. does. I if don't know. Not, Fortnite likes to steal dances, right? If not, get Tim Sweeney on the horn. We got a, right. got another lawsuit. Uh, what but, level are you right now in uh, Fortnite? Do you have the Spider Gwen? I do. I have Spider Gwen. I'm level like one thirty five. Oh, hot damn. Okay. At this point, I just unlocked Gwen without the hood. 
I'm 107 right now. That's what I'm lo- working towards. I need Ooh. one without the hood, and then and I'm then I'm a golden. Complete... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that was exactly my thought as well. I don't need to play anymore now that I have yeah. Gwen unlocked without the hood. So we're if any, like it, just for y'all that don't know, I love Into the Spider Verse. It's literally my favorite movie. There's not not like so like when I unlocked Gwen, I got like just not emotional. <laughs> my life isn't that sad yet but i, I it just it made me feel nice i'm like i the next thought is like once they get miles in here because you know it's gonna happen oh that's when i become yeah a husk of a man because i that my mission is then <laughs> it's God, a I got, very I good to. movie oh, yes so, yeah indeed yeah. so i've been playing Fortnite. looking forward to the event uh coming up here pretty soon uh, this will be the first time I actually uh, am playing Fortnite during one of these <laughs> events. Oh, it's going to be awesome. exciting. I'm excited. Anyway, um, also been playing Sea of Thieves. They uh, started a new season that's P- uh, PvP centric. Wow. Phil, Greg, I've so. never heard of the Sea of Thieves game. Uh, CJ, mm. would you like to fill us in? What's, what are you doing here? Joseph, it's a, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pirate game, you see. What? Oh. Yeah. No, in the new season, you can uh, select to represent either the Reaper side or the Athena side and automatically get matched with other players who are ready for battle. And uh, you pop up in a section of the map. So mm. it's it's like an invasion tactic. Uh, you can pop into somebody else's game anywhere on the existing map, mm. but it's it sections you off into a circle. So either crew can only battle in that circle and anything in the game can happen in that within that circle. So the Kraken can attack, you can have skeleton ships, you can have other players that are on that server come into the circle. Uh, It's, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff and you can play solo or as part of a crew, just like, uh, like normal. That's going to like stop the, the white sail folks from coming in and ruining your day. Possible. Possible? Okay. Yeah, I think it might. I think it might. It's certainly going to give people who want PvP, which is clearly not Greg, uh, something to or Phil. Or Phil. <laughs> <laughs> something to do in the or game. probably the chat, but you know what? This is our conversation, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I played a little bit of it uh, solo mostly, and I lost a bunch and won a couple of games. Uh, but it's interesting. I need to get better at PvP. I have gotten so rusty recently because I'm just I'm not playing it's as probably much all as that I time in the water. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's true. But uh, have you have you gotten to to check this out yet, Joe? Not yet. No? So usually our Sea of Thieves like runs are usually in the summer months, mm. and then it winds down for all the holiday, and then like January, February, one of us gets the itch to get back in. So. Okay. Yes, well, when you do, you should definitely try this out because it's pretty fun. <laughs> you get right into battle, uh, and the battles don't take very long because you, you only have that circle to go in. Yeah. Sometimes you won't be able to like resupply in that oh, wow. circle. So this is like a war uh, of attrition. It's a war. Here's of attrition. the thing: we're we're really into this talk. Phil, Greg, they're not even disconnected. No, it's just a lot of discontent that I'm feeling. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's like it's like we've had so many interventions on this, and I'm feeding the habits. <laughs> That's right. I'll put them out of their misery now. Right, we'll good. stop talking about sea of Thieves, but it's good. It's good. Anyway, yeah. I've also been playing that Pokemon video game that has so many technical issues that why would anybody want to play it? Wow. I don't really know. Wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been playing Pokemon Scarlet is the uh, is the version that I got, and uh, I've been having a ton, a ton of fun with it. Uh, More like Tetris I... Defect. Ouch! Oh damn! Oh wow! He's, he's, See, he's coming. I love this. You guys can't make fun of my games because they already suck. So, <laughs> <laughs> yikes! All right. <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah, Pokemon, Pokemon Scarlet, Scarlet, that game that's technically <laughs> awful. Uh, I've My, been, uh, <laughs> I've been having a lot of fun with it, despite the uh, the uh, Digital Foundry videos that would say otherwise, God. and pictures He's of the such on- a jerk <laughs> video clips on the internet of 
diglets coming out of places they really shouldn't be. My oh, um, my, what? Man, those diglets. <laughs> you don't start a sentence and end it like that, DJ, without some context. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't Uh-oh. run into any of those problems. But, you don't put uh, diglets up there. <laughs> some people do. If you're Richard um, Gere. Oh, God. But, uh... I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> my daughter really wants to get that game. Yeah, she, but she's still she's still working through Arceus. She's like, mm. she, you see, I don't know anything about the games very much, but she is like decided that with Arceus she has to get every Pokemon before mm. she's done mm. with the game, right? She's telling me like she's holding off mm. doing the critical path so wow, that she gets okay. all the Pokemon. So that's yeah. crazy. So she's I don't been play, chipping I don't, away at it. I do not play Pokemon games that way at all. I understand that there are people who do that who do have to quote unquote mm. catch them all. Catch but I am all. Uh, I am not that player in this. Yeah. I I find the six Pokemon that I like and I keep them in my party, and she, that's yeah. pretty much it. She's <laughs> she wants to get this next, I think, but she's just she's very invested in getting all the Pokemon in Arceus. I see. So. Well, anyway, this one I I think is uh, don't look pretty... up Diglett on Twitter, uh, please for the love of God, dude. I'm telling you guys because I was like, what's this about? It's not about the Pokemon. Not about the Pokemon. Oh no! Oh no! I've seen things that maybe you have to wipe wipe that history. Yep. No, absolutely. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> anyway, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I've uh, defeated one gym leader so far, but I mainly I've just been wandering around the world. It's an open world Pokemon game. They have structured it such that you can go anywhere in the world that you want. Of course, if you go in the wrong direction, you'll <laughs> run into Pokemon that are like 20 levels higher than you. So maybe that not a great idea to go that direction. But uh, it's it's pretty fun. A nice, uh, I think it's a nice evolution of the Pokemon, of, of the mainline there. Pokemon gameplay. Uh, but of course, it, it takes some ideas from Arceus, some ideas from the other Pokemon games. And uh, kind of combines everything together, and I I've been having fun so far, so I like it. That's what I keep hearing from people, even who do complain about any technical issues they find, is that it's still a fun game. Still fun, yeah. So, you know. finally yeah. found that Diglett glitch. Yeah, that is hilarious. <laughs> you gotta I, Google I, search it. Google I've search not. It. Uh, I've not run into anything like that. But okay, there are a lot yeah, of humorous I, videos. I, you know what it is? I have this like this nature now with social media to kind of just, all right, you're complaining about it. That's cute, but like, how are people actually enjoying it? And it seems like if 10 million people bought this in three days, it seems like it's people yeah. are enjoying themselves enough. Well, uh, and then I, I've I've seen on Twitter like the same video tweeted out from multiple people so who did it actually originate from like right. who ran into this issue versus the people who are tweeting it out as if it was something they saw oh, in no, the game Phil, are you looking at no don't do it phil no <laughs> phil, no do... no I'm... he's 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 browsing facebook right now i don't want to be browsing <laughs> facebook i don't know you, you want to know what i'm actually doing what are you doing show me I'm buying Shin Godzilla on iTunes. Oh, uh, there you go. Is it on discount? It's on sale for five bucks. Excellent. And it's a very good movie. I hear you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also been playing a little bit of Sonic Frontiers. I am in the second a little area. Bit the second area. And uh, I don't know. It's kind of running out of steam mm. for me. Ooh. I've I've spent a lot of time in the second area on the second island and like when is it going to be over <laughs> like i've spent too much time in this area wow. i'm ready i'm ready to hop to the next area now and it's just it keeps going so like i i played a little bit of this before i left so it's yeah. been a couple of weeks and i haven't picked it back up because i wanted to um focus on plague tale i wanted to finish plague tale mm-hmm. so i could move on to god of war but um yeah. so i haven't picked it back up but what i did play of it before i left I'm so confused by that game. And I, I'm, I'm not confused. I'm sorry. Bewildered by that <laughs> game. Like, I just don't know what it's trying to be. Breath um, of the I'll tell you one thing. It doesn't feel like Sonic. Mm. Okay. 
That's my opinion. The open world sections. When the you go into like the virtual area and you're in like the more classic Sonic stuff, like, okay, now I'm I get it. But yeah, when you're in that yeah. open world, it's like I don't this character doesn't feel like it was meant to do this. Mm. Um and like and nothing about the open world says Sonic at all. That is very true. Mm. That Including is very the true. Music. I think I think I saw a comment uh from Mike Micah. That you retweeted, Greg. I think yeah. uh, the open world in Sonic Frontiers feels too like oppressive, too real. Whereas, like, I want to see the Green Hill Zone version of this. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, I, I agree was, with that. and I, I recommend <laughs> this, by the way. Um, I was on the Fun and Games podcast. I was on with uh, G to the Next Level, and we recorded mm-hmm. this before Frontiers came out, and it was just sort of talking about Sonic, uh, the Sonic franchise in general, and also what we were hoping to see with Frontiers, um, and. Yeah, like it's it, it's kind of that age old problem with Sonic is that they they seem like they lost their way after really after the Genesis games. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say um, when. Let's because, see. Sonic yeah, because Adventure I mean, one. Yeah, like they started. They really just sort of started spreading out, and 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 the character. I don't think they knew what the character is meant to be anymore. And mm-hmm. every now, like it seems like every few years, they try to dip into this like really sort of heavy sinister i don't know i don't even know how to describe it and like w- w- go ahead phil you, you look oh, like you have this, something to say this this is when i would uh, you, you weren't here mm. a couple weeks ago when i first started playing this game when cj and i first started playing this game and i was saying this exact same thing the yeah. when you're running around the overworld and and the way I described it was it, it you know it's it's playing all this sad Minecraft music yeah and it's all rainy and gray and it's just like this is this is not fun this is not this is this is not and Sonic. it's not Sonic that's the no. thing like we were talking about on that show like I said please go listen because I think it was a really good discussion um, is that they really Sega really had a chance here uh, because the two they've got two very successful movies in the mm-hmm. last few years for this character they've they've essentially reinvented sonic um for like a new generation where they even managed to put sonic in a real world which yeah. i never thought they'd be able to do properly because they haven't been able to do it properly in the video games and you know to have them interacting with humans and so i, th- I felt like they had a real opportunity here but and again we've we, they've just gone all schizophrenic with who sonic is supposed to be again mm-hmm. And yeah, like, I mean, I'm going to play more of it, but it just, it does, it's not Sonic. It's not the new Sonic. It's not the old Sonic. I don't know what they want it to be. Well, I, so, I would stand by my opinion that this is accidentally a good Sonic game. I think, uh, really, I mean, I haven't of, played, I need to play more of it, but I think they kind of stumbled upon <laughs> this thing where the open world feels vaguely like Breath of the Wild, where if you see something, you can interact with it and there's a fun usually a fun jumping puzzle or something especially on the second island but the stuff in between just doesn't really i mean it kind of feels and i think i read somewhere that the levels are in some way recycled from previous sonic games I'm like, <laughs> really i mean it may not be correct but i haven't played enough previous sonic games to know <laughs> if this is true or Just not one random level where you turn into a werehog <laughs> yeah <Yikes>. exactly <laughs> but then they have these interesting boss fights which are kind of a fun way to uh to mix things up but i i I think you're right. I think they don't know what makes Sonic fun, and they just kind of threw some things at the wall to see what sticks in this case. And uh, yeah, while I think it it worked for me initially, like I said, the second island is kind of wearing thin on me now. Where it's like I want to see some progression here. I've talked to Knuckles like twelve different times about how I need to collect more of his tokens. It's just like I don't need mm. to do any more of that. So yeah, yeah. You know, I it's this is such a crazy game because it's not just reviewing all over the place, but like depending on who you're talking to, uh, it, this is either like one of their favorite games or one of their favorite Sonic games, or like this is an abomination. I've come to the <laughs> uh, to terms that Sonic fans and, and Sonic team have taken crazy pills, mm-hmm. um, and they can no longer be trusted. That's why. I'm running for president in 2024. We gotta, 
we got to curb the sonic <laughs> epidemic. We have to come to the realization as a country and as a world come together and acknowledging there has not been a good sonic game outside of colors of mania uh since the genesis yeah. and only then can we start to heal as <laughs> and heal all the divides if we could just come together and just say sonic generations is good generations is okay yeah sonic hasn't been good well <laughs> it, you know we just gotta are, come to grips guys it's, it's are they here. gonna make a sonic mania too they should. I don't know. They should. Yeah. Are they gonna? I don't know. Because I feel like like this team, they take a look at what's trending right now in the in the in in the industry. They're just like, how can we? Well, we're hearing the term "Breath of the Wild" a lot. How can we "Breath of the Wild" Sonic? <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Well, I feel like you haven't even gotten the formula down right for 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 years now. So, like, let's get the formula down right. Let's actually define who Sonic is and what makes a good Sonic game. Before we can start mashing buttons and hitting levers, I think it's interesting. One of the things that I did find interesting was that there are options in there to actually uh, control his speed, yes, and things like that. Which, which, because that that to me was one of my, and I'm not saying that this fixes the problem, but one of my biggest concerns when I first started seeing Frontier uh in trailers and things is like well how do you how do you reconcile this character that moves so fast uh mm -hmm. with this big open world mm -hmm. and i mean i see how they did it you're 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 literally going from area of interest to area of interest yeah um and then unlocking the rails as a fast travel system which i actually think that's one of the more clever things they did they look weird all of a sudden you have all these rails hanging in the air all over the place but I mean, it's well, also, it's is there a way to determine which rails are the fast travel system and which no. rails are the other kind of no. rails? There's no differentiation between them, which I, right. I wish they had made them look different. Right. Yeah. Oh, well. And then you have like the Shadow of the Colossus boss fights. Yeah. That again, it's just it, throwing and stitching another element that just, it's all so divergent. And I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I got to play it's more fine. of it, obviously, but it's it fine. didn't do much for me. It's not going to get on my game of the year list, but it's fine. No. Yeah. And no. I, I really did enjoy the first Island. I honestly did. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm like still on the second Island, the pacing is just like killed it for me, mm -hmm. but Oh, well, yeah. Greg. Hi, what have you been playing? Um, I want to call out real quick that, uh, we had game positive in the chat. Come on. And, uh, mm. and say that he bought Castlevania three, um i work with i work with him i've been on his podcast as well um and uh he has not played some of the old castlevanias so oh that's, that's very exciting although the deal was to play castlevania bloodlines <laughs> game positive <laughs> can't so you just buy the you're not really getting any points can't you just get that castlevania anniversary collection that's true yeah Could it has like that. all of them mm -hmm. yeah um <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, so Sonic Frontiers I played. Uh, I have started playing God of War, but the 2018 version. Because oh, now that I really? finished... Uh, well, yeah, because I didn't really play that. And now that I've finished oh. uh, Plague Tale, and I do want to play Ragnarok, um, I didn't really play Dead of Boy. And so everybody so going is saying, back. like, you've got to play this because it's a Ragnarok is a direct sequel. Yeah. Um, you need to know what's going on. So I, I fired it up, put it on story mode. I remember how much I have a little previously on God of War. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember how much I hated the fact that he calls uh, Trey as boy uh, for the first part of the game. But uh, I know that's supposed to be part of his character arc. But anyway, um, I don't really have much to say about it. Just saying that I am playing it. I'm going to try to sort of get through it as fast as possible so I can get into Ragnarok. Sure. I'll tell you, talking about the game awards. What's wrong with them oh boy. is that they didn't find a category where Atari 50 could fit in. Now Wait I know a second, you're definitely... telling me you stopped playing God of War to play no, no. Atari? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm telling you I put off playing God of War oh. to play Atari oh 50. Did you listen to the last uh, P1? No, but I heard. I heard. <laughs> Mr. No Mr. Mr. Nelson had some strong words about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You may have seen. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me tell Joseph, you. What, Joseph, what do you think of Atari? Uh, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, 
you know you're a, you're a youngster you didn't grow up with atari probably it's, no it's true actually i i i, I remember the jaguar dying i remember <laughs> i don't think i've ever legitimately guys i really don't think i've like I've held yeah. a uh, like a, a joystick, but I've, I don't think I've ever played an Atari. Yeah, but have game. you played an Atari? Yeah, I don't have think you played I ever Atari have. today. Oh, ah. no, I'd rather not. Though. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but so, Atari Fifty is—it's like a documentary that you can play. I think that okay. to me, That's exactly that, it. That is the documentary entirety of the package. If it was just a hundred games from the 2600 through the Jaguar. I don't think I would necessarily be as excited about it as I am about Atari mm-hmm. 50. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the games to me don't have as much yeah. nostalgic pull. See, they do. They do for me um, because that the Atari 2600 is where I started gaming. I wasn't crazy about games at that point. Like the NES was what really got me into like gaming as a passion. Uh, gave me a passion for the hobby. But I mean, the 2600, you know, was ubiquitous amongst me and my friends. Everyone had one. Yeah. You go to my friend's place and play 2600. We had we had 2600 at home. But yeah, like I, I want to talk about this because and I'm sure, Phil, you were talking about this uh, a couple weeks ago, too, is that like this outside of what the subject matter is about, um, you got to give it to Digital Eclipse because they have set a new standard for mm-hmm. this type of compilation. And yeah. Yeah. The interactive timeline thing is absolutely brilliant. The The presentation is like second to none. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's a wonderful collection of not only, you know, box art and posters and magazine articles and clips and quotes and interviews. Like, it's just, it's, it's so complete. And for me, like, I love going onto the timeline Like you said, CJ, if it was just a list of games, may or may not be that interesting. But I love going into the timeline and getting to like, you know, here's Centipede, you know, and it's like you scroll down and here's a here's a quotable quote from somebody who was involved. And here's an interview with one of the developers. And here's an old commercial. And, you know, like just it's adding context to these releases, which I think is so important. And I think it's something that's I, I've talked about this a little bit previously, but I think it's something that's missing so much, especially in like the retro gamer YouTube community mm. um, where, you know, we talk about all these old games and I'm not saying that they don't hold people don't hold the proper reverence for them or anything like that. But so often there's no context given when we talk about these old games, especially people, yeah. no offense to the younger folks, but especially people who weren't there to to live it at all. Right. And it um, makes it feel like the, the way you're selling it, like it, it, I think that one of the problems with the retro packages is they all kind of feel like shoehorned. Like they're yeah. just like, here it is. And we want, you know, 15 bucks, please. Like it feels more transactional yeah, where right. it, it feels like this has a lot more meaning behind each oh, game. Because it's, it absolutely it's does. And that's, and that's exactly it. And the way that they've divided it up where it's like, here's the arcade timeline. Here's the 2600 yeah, timeline. Here's cool. the eighties and nineties. And, you know, cause I mean, we've been beaten over the head with sort of the the major story beats of gaming in the 70s and the early 80s which was you know there was pong and then there was the 2600 or there were home pong and then the 2600 and those games got better and then in 1983 or whatever everybody stopped playing video games because of the crash which was not true at all right and stopped making video games which was also not true and that's something that i love about this is that you know you're getting especially um when you're talking about games like Missile Command and Centipede and Tempest and Breakout, you're getting the arcade version. You're getting the lesser known sequels sometimes that nobody knew about. You're getting the 2600 versions. You're getting the 5200 versions, the 7800 versions. So you get to see sort of what the the source material was along with the 2600 games. And and in my mind, it reminded me it reminded me a lot about how on that ancient hardware, how extremely playable a lot of these conversions were. Um, you know, Missile Command on the 2600 is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Centipede on the 2600 is fantastic. And it was so cool to have the context of, of what those were, but also talking to these developers. And I also loved things like there was there was a there was a clip. Gary Kitchen and David Crane were interviewed, obviously, together. So they are in a lot of clips together. And uh, they had this whole section on the, the video game crash. And Gary Kitchen made such a perfect point. I tweeted about this was just like, you know, there was a crash, but nobody told the consumers. And like, and that was 
I was so happy to hear it because that was my experience with the video game crash, which is like, yeah, I, I, I know now in hindsight that it happened. And obviously if I was, if I was old enough to really sort of be able to read what was happening at retail and the fact that games were really cheap, you know, obviously something was going on and that the, the, maybe the um, supply wasn't as high, but like, you know, he even pointed out, like, I think they were, where they had already created absolute or maybe they were still activision or whatever but he had pointed out like they went from this beautiful office space to like this tiny little room basically but they were still making 2600 games because there was still demand there just wasn't very much demand so hmm. things like that you know it just lends so much context um in and as far as like youtube like it's something i try to do in my youtube show but also people like jeremy Parrish do a great job at this people like kevin bunch do a great job at this on youtube where it's like Here's the game, here's a review, but here's what was going on around that game. And here's what the developers were thinking and doing and talking about. And I just love how it's presented. If I have any complaint, the only thing that I will say is that when you get into the 90s, and again, there wasn't a lot happening with Atari and video games in the 90s when the Jaguar and the Lynx, you know, but they know it definitely sort of that context starts to fall off a lot mm -hmm. in the timeline. Um, uh, yeah. But the other thing that I really love is that I also think this is super important because like Gary Kitchen, David Crane, Todd Fry, um, uh, uh, Howard Scott Warsaw, Warshaw, uh, and of course, and especially Nolan Bushnell, they're all getting pretty old. And it's great yeah. to have this package where there are so many interviews and clips with them, which could very easily be some of the final interviews you see about these games from these people who created them mm -hmm. so i really think it was important to do this now as well uh it was oh it was it's so great i'm so and i mean i'm only half joking when i say they should have found a way to fit this in the game awards somehow because <laughs> it really does i know it's not new although there are some new games on there yeah yeah um that are pretty good but yeah. um it it, it it has absolutely they've out they've actually digital eclipse has made their own lives more difficult moving forward i think <laughs> because they trade in these these retro game compilations. yeah they did and, such a good job on know, this one yeah that the next yeah. one is gonna need to be to this level yeah but it also makes me you know you're talking about like the game developers getting up in years it almost makes me think it man it'd be great if nintendo cherished their history yes. as much as or sega some other or konami companies. or sega or, or konami <laughs> exactly because miyamoto just celebrated his 70th birthday yeah. right and yeah. i mean he's getting like, up there he's not getting any younger and nope. I, I would love to uh, you know a lot of interviews with miyamoto don't really talk about some of the early games i would love to have some kind of more perspective on when they were making super mario brothers or making zelda 2 or like all of this other stuff, like I think that'd be great. And of course, Digital Eclipse could totally knock well, that one out of the park, but would they even have access right. to, to do so, right? Like Nintendo. Well, exactly. Just doesn't such seem a, like the kind of company. It, it, you're right. And it's such a shame because Nintendo, they just, yeah, they don't treat their classic stuff with the respect that and the reverence that I feel like they deserve. And just to think, like, how many opportunities they had to like pick Miyamoto's brain a bit to just understand the process or to have a creator you know pick his brain a bit to understand that process and then you know learn from it or adapt from it or be inspired from it that's there's just so much you're, yeah. you're, you're losing by not doing it and Nintendo would I don't know, well, rather sue you for trying to and I mean, you know, hold on to that history it's yeah. the same lesson that we've learned, and I think Nintendo is directly would have learned this with uh, Satoru Iwata. I mean, yeah. we as sort of fans of gaming and the gaming community as a whole got so lucky over the fact that he was doing that Iwata Ask series. Yeah. There was so much wisdom and so many interesting <laughs> things that he, you know, imparted to everyone. Totally, totally by not by fluke, but very lucky that he decided to do that because where he passed away so young, it's like, man, can you imagine how much, how terrible it would? I mean, it was terrible anyway, but how terrible it would be if he hadn't imparted any of that knowledge, yeah, yeah, in in a digestible format, like you know. So yeah, I would love to see them do something similar, some sort of even you know memoirs or something with with yeah. with him. But anyway, yeah, yeah. 
but yeah, because they're all getting up there. So yeah, Atari 50. I just, I wanted to gush about it. Um, and yes, I did hear, Phil, that you tried to do that and got... <laughs> <laughs> but I can understand the perspective, though, because if you weren't there, sure. right, and you look at the game, you look at the screenshots of the games, you're like, why would I want to play that? I mean, absolutely true. But you can't discount how influential a lot of that period, a lot of what Atari did mm -hmm. is to modern gaming and having that context and that sort of documentary style is so valuable it is and and again because we've hit those beats so you know like i mean we've been fed that not and not that it's wrong but we've been fed that story for so long about how you know there was pong and then there was home pong and then there was 2600 and then, and then e. a bunch of third parties came in all. and et happened and everything fell apart <laughs> and nintendo resurrected it and from a very high level if you're looking at it from the atmosphere that's the story yeah, but you know, digging down into it, like the the other things that I I loved in there was that you know you're not just getting sort of the um the the the, the regular the usual suspects mm. in here. You are getting them, but you know, like it was so interesting to see things like uh how a lot of developers there were dabbling with what became like action RPGs. Mm. You know, like there was I forget I forget the name of the game right now, but there was one game. Or no, it was the Sword Quest games, I think, was a good example. But there was another game before that where you're like, you're watching it. And it's like, I see the bones of Zelda here. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying they were responsible for Zelda. But it's like, you know, it, it that wasn't something that, that Miyamoto and anyone else who worked on the original Zelda sort of cut out of whole cloth. Like, there, right. w there was precedent set there. Whether they played it or not, I don't know. But, you know, there was a lot of creativity there that I don't think we give especially the Atari developers credit for hmm. uh, in the late seventies and early eighties. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course the other game, I mentioned this earlier that I've been playing um, and I don't know how much I want to talk about uh, the end game of this because, because uh, you're playing it as well, but I finished Plague Tale uh, Requiem um, this week and um, kind of everything that you were saying about God of War uh, I think really applies mm. to to Requiem. Um, mm. I was a big fan of the previous one, which talked about on the show. I think I I might have given it my game of the year the year it came out. Um, it's terrific. It's really great, yeah. and I've mentioned this. I mentioned previously when I started to play it that I loved how this time around it feels. The scale feels so much more grand um, because, of course, we were in the you know it was the middle of medieval France. Um, and, and, you know, in, in smack dab in the plague during the plague, obviously. So the previous game was very dank and dark almost at all times, um, which was fine. I didn't, I didn't dislike that, but I love that this time around, um, Amicia and uh, Hugo actually, they travel a lot more and, mm -hmm. uh, the whole game takes place or starts at least, I think it takes the whole thing takes place in Provence and like, you still have those sort of dark, dank areas, but they're balanced a lot better with sort of lively, colorful uh, cityscapes and and um, just, you know, there's a lot of greenery. There's a lot of color in this game that wasn't in the previous game. Um, but I think, and what I'm really hoping that this game gets recognized for, I would love to see it win Game of the Year. I really enjoyed it a lot. Um but I'm really hoping that it gets recognized for the acting and the storytelling in general. Um, the previous game, the storytelling was fantastic. Are you playing in English or French? You uh, know what? I, heard... I played in English, although I did every now and then I switched over to French um, hmm. because it, it, I mean, the French That's language is the original language. Yeah. And the French language is beautiful to listen to, in my opinion. It's it's a it's a very uh, attractive language. But um, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Oh, man, but um, we oui, we oui. it's funny because there's actually one is character. And I can't it, remember his aim? name. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, but uh, he's like he's called the wall and he's just this big soul. He's this uh, like this fallen soldier. And um, at one point, he makes a, he makes a, a snide remark about Englishmen, but he says it in a very heavy British accent, so it just doesn't really land quite the same way. Yeah. <laughs> but that's when you remind us, like, oh right, this is a French game. Um, but no, the story, like, and this is what I liked about Amicia in the first 
in the first uh, game, but they really, really hammer it hard this game where she's fighting this, you know, what seems like a losing battle. And she's she's like really raging against it, um, even to the point where the the person she's protecting, Hugo, is giving up. Um, you know, you really you really sort of go on a ride with her through the whole thing. And like I said, I don't want to I, I don't want to give too much detail because I don't want to ruin it. Um, the the end game, um, but like, yeah, it, it, she's written so so beautifully because. She she moves from like you know sort of hopelessness to sort of a f- this false hope that she's because she's trying to do this sort of maternal thing with her little brother as well where you know like she knows that things are hopeless but she also doesn't want him to give up and I think especially as a parent um, you know you kind of you can you can relate to that a little bit um, and then she'll have like quiet moments to herself there's a couple times in the game where she literally the whole point of the scene is that you'll you'll find something that is added to your bestiary or something like that and then she'll just break down like she'll have a panic attack or she'll you know and then she'll sort of shake herself out of it and stand up it's like i've got to keep going and that sort of thing um so i really hope it gets recognized for the writing like for the narrative and for the acting uh the 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 actress who who voices amicia did a fantastic job uh in this game and i i gotta say like by the end of the game, I actually felt like I had gotten to near the end of the game and then realized there were like five more chapters to go. <laughs> but it, it didn't really overstay its welcome. But um, I was moved to tears at the end of the game. Like it is an emotional climax. Um, and I'm going to say putting your main characters in an impossible situation uh Sobo did a way better job than Naughty Dog did with uh, Last of Us Two in that situation. Really, um, I've complained it? about the ending of Naughty Dog Two before, or of, of uh, Last of Us Two before, okay. and um, like I feel like Asobo sort of tackled similar content and they handled it so much better. Which is a high compliment because of how much a the influence of the Last of Us that Plague Tale wears. Oh God, yeah. Sleeve. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Oh, it's it's yeah. a Naughty Dog game without the budget. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, that's what the first one was, and and this absolutely is as well. Um, but yeah, I, I'd love to go into more detail on the ending, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to do I'm that. I'm excited, to you, so. man. I'm excited. I feel yeah. like I need to restart the game. I'm on like chapter two, but Ragnarok happened, so I'm like, I think I just tomorrow seems like a fun time to just sit on the yeah. couch, You're relax. Sad. Yeah, play some Plague Tale. The lack of polish still shows itself every now and then, um, but and I don't think I don't know whether I said this previously because I didn't know I don't know if I'd gotten far enough into it to really talk about it. But man, when that game is working, when you're in when you're in uh, sort of conflicts where you can take advantage of sort of what Hugo has certain powers as well, like you can take advantage of Hugo's powers, and you can take advantage of the different uh, weapons that Amicia can get. Um, and I mean, I was playing on story mode and it was still things were, you know, ammo was really scarce and, and, you know, um, so you're never, you're never overpowering your enemies and near the end, they really start to put you in situations where you have to combine being aggressive with being stealthy and like, you know, sort of use the, the sea of rats to your, to your advantage as well in some really creative ways and so there were definitely in the last like five chapters there were moments where i was like man this is the story is great and that's sort of what pulled me in but man these gameplay moments when they get it right they get it so right Hmm. it feels great cool so yeah yeah that's that's me gushing about plague tale plague tale requiem go play it it absolutely absolutely deserves to be on that that uh, game awards game of the year list 100 percent, and it should it should I, I i guess i'm guessing people are probably writing it off compared to what else is on that list but it shouldn't be it, it's it's right up there with the rest of them nice all right well i guess that means it's time for tweets five 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 uh yeah that was something there you go i guess i should say we do have a hive account p1 podcast uh 
if you want to follow it. Look at that. It's I'm just sitting on it right now, not right. in, in case right. uh, you built continue. the raft. <laughs> yeah, I built the raft in, <laughs> in case people want to take it. Honestly, all that all that's that media that platform needs is cash flow and server space, and uh, yeah, I I would be there full time. Um, yeah, but here, listen, uh, Elon's a genius uh, at running <laughs> this whole thing into the ground. God bless. Him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if only the employees could. Be you had me in the first half. Yeah, <laughs> the, the hive employees need to be more hardcore. Need to be more yeah, hardcore. Yeah, hardcore, parkour. Yeah. All right. So let's do this one from Mac Aurelius Grantimus, who says, "Why do you think so many games are being aggressively handholdy with puzzles all of a sudden? Examples: God of War and Plague Tale Requiem. Is this an effort to get more people to finish the games?" Yes. Uh, sure. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And let, let me tell you, I, I've had debates with some folks that say the puzzles are too handholdy in Ragnarok. I think at times, absolutely. Hmm. But uh, at other times, I'm like, "Hey, Atreus, could you say something?" Because uh, <laughs> I'm a little <laughs> stuck here. here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah, where I think us us gamers are with a, the TM capital G are hmm. way more smarter than we let ourselves on so you know we understand yes. these puzzles more than the layman i think <laughs> well yeah i mean i think part of it is they don't want you to get frustrated at any time and like bring down the pacing of these games right because these games especially god of war yeah. especially plague tale are are going for that sort of cinematic style that movie pacing and while they want the gameplay of the puzzle they don't want you to sit there for ever and try to guess what they want you to do right <laughs> right so they want to try to make it easy of course i think on harder difficulties they should probably curb that or maybe remove it all together or maybe like <laughs> offer as a menu option like give me yep. a hint <laughs> and not do it automatically right. but i definitely understand the um why you would want that because it sort of weaves the idea of getting a hint into the story, right? If the game sees that you've been sitting in this area for two minutes, here's a little th- piece of dialogue that I'm going to say that's going to bump you in the right direction. And I mean, you know, the upside to that is in both the games we're talking about, the main character pretty much always has a companion with them. Yeah. So it feels more natural. Yeah. And they did that in The Last of Us as mm. well. Like, press that L3 to get a hint. Mm-hmm. God bless. And listen, I'm a big dumb idiot, folks. <laughs> so I welcome all these, all these, you know, like, hints and whatnot. Uh, because, like, for me, puzzles are my least favorite part. So if mm-hmm. we could just get this part out of the way, that'd be fantastic. And if yeah, yeah. my little companion helps me along the way, that'd be also great. I mean, I'm playing I'm on the easy difficulty. <laughs> a lot of these instances so the more help i get the better i'm fine Please. with it yeah all right hacker alias guitar salad says did any of you bite on either the new dual sense edge ps5 controller psvr2 or both no. no may i have a rant go ahead and rant away <laughs> sir there we go <laughs> first off uh shout out to <laughs> luke lore uh, i know i i you have a lot of digs at this man a lot because he is genuinely an awful human being, a uh, terrible go. person, but did me a huge solid. Um, and that is he pre-ordered the DualSense Edge for me oh. because PlayStation Direct, every time I hit checkout, hits me with the error. Go oh to the self-help, which is the worst option ever. For, and you're never going to get help on the, the 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 help yourself support line where I'm talking mm-hmm. to a robot named, I don't know, Jake. It's like, no, no, none of this. The, I've been on support with PlayStation Direct because because of this. And they literally go, yeah, there's nothing we can do. Well, what? I'm like, have I been blacklisted? Like, why would I be? Like, the last thing I bought was a PlayStation 5 from you guys, and now I can't buy anything. And they're just like, we have no idea. You got to go to a different vendor. I'm like, but when the option is only you. Right. Yeah. Mm. My brother and Shu, what mm. are we doing here? Mm. Hey, please let me let let me purchase the PlayStation VR in 
another place other than PlayStation Direct because it is so awful. And I shouldn't be punished because of its errors and bugs and glitches that it has uh, that I have to wait a month for the DualSense Edge or whenever the PSVR 2 comes to other retailers. I think it's ridiculous. So I have the DualSense Edge. I can't wait to play with it and 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 give it a good uh you know run it through its pacing uh paces but like with the playstation vr2 i actually got so disgruntled with it i was just like i don't even know if i'm gonna purchase it to be honest like <laughs> there's no way like i how many holes and things i have to go through leaps i gotta go through it's just just tired i don't want to do it i don't want to i don't want to have to bum 600 bucks immediately to someone just so that i could guarantee it you know a pre-order it just Mm -hmm. it's madness madness i say yeah yeah thank you for coming to my ted talk (laughs) (laughs) all right uh let's do this one from hacker alias shaggy gooseneck who says what black friday game deals do you plan on picking up this year which black friday uh already happened yeah uh as we're recording this but I did pick up Alan Wake remastered on uh, PS5. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did that. I did uh, Half-Life Alex on Steam. Nice. And I think that's it. Maybe a couple other things. Small things. I got that's Gotham cool. Knights. Ooh, you got the Cowabunga. I got the Xbox version of Cowabunga Collection. Oh. Nice. So just to have it why i mean i have the, I got a rock. <laughs> why I, why I, why phil because this is gonna go away one day well, you're you're right actually it's a licensed going, game so yes this, it is this is not a forever game this you're game right going that's away actually, that's actually a great argument <laughs> yeah and it was what 20 20 bucks i think yeah so get it while it's while it's around okay yeah Anybody else partake in the Black Friday stuff? No. Yeah. yeah, I just got Gotham Knights. I traded in Splatoon 3 because there's only so many times a person could get disconnected. You know what? <sighs> this is becoming a therapy session for me. But uh, honestly, God, Nintendo's figure out these servers. I'm paying you a nickel to keep them up every month, please. <laughs> as much as I do. love Splatoon 3, and I do, how, how do they not have a fix for the communication errors? Like, I get it every multiple times every time I play. It's crazy. Oof. So I got Gotham Knights instead. Yeah. And, uh, perfect for, for 20 bucks of which I paid. I have no that sounds about right. Yeah. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that's a, that's a show. I think that's where we end it. And that's it? We've we've gone way too long. We're already over two hours. Oh, my. Oh, damn. Oddly enough. That, that was my, you know, I ranted too much, boys. I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfectly okay, sir. It was uh we're making up for for not missing for missing the week last week with a a longer show this week, right? There that's what go. we're doing, maybe. Sure. I feel like that works. Anyway, yeah, kind of works. Alrighty then. Thank you very much for listening. That is a show for this week. Uh, if you want to tweet at us or uh, say how right or wrong we are about video games, you can do that. Just direct it to at P1 Podcast on the hives. Uh, or I guess Twitter. Well, it's still around. Uh, it, it's not going anywhere, right, though? Twitter? It'll, be, it'll still be around. Uh, but anyway... I mean... <laughs> in some well, form we'll i'm sure no, no, no. Well, we'll see how it we'll see how it goes uh yeah anyway so or you can go to our website at player one podcast.com there you'll find a contact information you'll find blog entries about sega cd stuff from mr greg stewart you'll find generation 16 episodes as they happen that new one how's it going with the genesis mini 2 you were gonna do a thing with the it's stuff it's going still working on it it's going all right yeah good good to hear it uh, look, look forward to that, folks. You can also find show notes and links to all the things we talked about on the show. Uh, and there's a link to our Discord server within that uh, where you can discuss this episode with us and our other listeners. If you would like to subscribe to the Player One Podcast, you can do so by visiting playeronepodcast.com or by loading up your favorite podcast listening app. 
We're also on Stitcher Radio. We're on Spotify. You can like us on Facebook. You can uh, watch video archives of our show on the YouTubes.com slash P1 Podcast. Or you can watch us live, live, live most weeks on the YouTubes, the Twitters, the Facebooks, the Twitch dot televisions all over the dang place. Just follow our Twitter account at uh, at P1 Podcast to find out when we are doing our next live show. Uh, typically, it is Sunday evenings at 5.30 specific time. So uh, join us, won't you? And I'll tell you what, if you like what you've heard and how could you, head over to patreon.com slash P1 Podcast. Throw a few shekels our way. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. Oh, CJ's got, oh, CJ's got a, a, a Splatoon Amiibo. Jesus. That's what, that's what the funds are going towards. Oh, he's got, he's got all of them. He's got all three oh, of wow. the new Splatoon Amiibo. Their kids now, they're squids now. They're turning, they're turning into squids and kids live on air. Squids and kids. It's crazy. That's right. Yeah. No, I, I don't use show funds for that though. That you report on your taxes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. That's how they got Capone, CJ. So tread the tune amiibos? Yeah. yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They're coming out of their squid now, you see? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Once you got one, you can't stop. <laughs> the monster hunter one's real rare, you see? <laughs> That's right. This fella's an import from Japan. Yeah. yeah. Now zip your lip. <laughs> <laughs> it's Coitons for you, mugs. Coitons. <laughs> My Capone's drifting into stooge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you mugs. Yeah, yeah, you on your... We into ran mouth. into Looney Tunes for way fast. <laughs> Tell me a porcupine. <laughs> <sighs> Anyway, your your Patreon funds do uh, help keep the show running. Keeps us uh, broadcasting on the melon live and recording this week. CJ's trying something new over there. We'll I can see. see it up in the corner. Yeah. We're recording. Via melon. It's crazy. Via melon. No more so, audacity here. Yeah. Makes it easier this for me. Like I don't mind. became a potato. Hmm. Potatoes, Potatoes are good. <laughs> starch. Yeah, starchy goodness. <laughs> so <laughs> I love the pregnant box. Jeez, <laughs> please. <laughs> Have Just you go forgotten? give us some money. Go to Patreon and give us some money. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Five I'll tell you what though. Yeah. I'll tell you what though, friend does. <laughs> We're not just taking your money for free, although we gladly will. <laughs> But we also record a special bonus episode right after this, in fact, where we play games crackwise, having fun doing all the stuff we can't do on the regular show. Oh. Uh for just uh for 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 if you are a, a Patreon supporter of the five dollar tier. Cheap. There it is. You really messed up the order on that. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm a bit distracted, Greg. I haven't seen you in a while, and you're looking Aww. delish. <laughs> All right. I can't argue with that. I know you can't. And why would you? Mm. But uh, but yeah, go do that. And I'll tell you what, if you have a couple bucks. Oh, oh CJ, do we have a, we have a game this week? That's <laughs> we do. Going. We, we, we do? do have a game this week. Oh, good. It is a Transformers Jeopardy quiz. Wait, oh, what? God. Transformers who's, who's Jeopardy quiz. Who's sending that nonsense in? I'll give you one guess. Mr. Mr. Nelson. Boom. There yes. it is. I mean, you know, bully for me, because obviously this is who this is written for. I'll just be sitting this one out, really. But okay. Yeah. But uh but yeah. Join us for that, please. We'll we'll be we'll be talking about Transformer stuff. Uh and then it's if you have a couple of bucks left over. Snap show ever. <laughs> Remember when you were gone and how great that was? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> For everyone, and I mean you too. You can't oh. tell me you. There he is. There he He's is. gone. He's gone. He's gone. Good. Back to Disney with you. <laughs> Wait, he'd like that too much. Yeah, it's true. 
You know what, though? Now that he's gone, I can say something nice. Oh, oh no. damn it, he's back. If you have a couple bucks left over, go over to patreon.com slash Greg Seward. Just the one T right at the end. Greg Seward. Yeah. Where you can help support Greg's outstanding. And it is. It is outstanding. And I'll say, you know what? I'll say it. I'll say it to his face. I'll say it to your awful, handsome face, Greg. It is outstanding. Thank you. Web series. You're very welcome. About North America's favorite runner-up, the Sega Genesis. Thank you, Phil. And if you are a, a patron of the five dollar variety. Oh, also cheap. There it is. You get access to the <laughs> weekly series of vlogs called the Weekly Commute, where I talk about the videos I'm working on. Uh still working on a Mega Drive Mini 2 review video that's coming, a uh, ranking video actually that's coming soonish. Um, mm -hmm. also get early access to all the uh, major videos that are released on my channel and yeah, I get to talk about all kinds of stuff I was talking about my new Obi-Wan lightsaber that I got from Disney oh dear today. Okay. talking about the Wing Commander Kilrathi saga and memories of playing mm. that for the first time oh my um, yes please consider uh, supporting the show you should you really should is that it that's it that's it, that's it. CJ uh huh. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. A Gregory. Yo. Uh, thank you as well. Thank you, Philip. Hey, no problem, man. No problem. And of course, a big old, big old, big old thanks to our special, special, super special guest. I am, of course, talking about Mr. Joseph Moran of the uh, Trophy Room podcast. Tell everyone where they can find you, Joseph, please. All right, Phil. Watch this, right? Here we go. I, I, I can't promise as smooth <laughs> of a businessman as you are. Okay. Top of the delivery, right? Okay. So you can find me over at Mr. Babbitt on Twitter or Hive. You can find the Trophy Room at PS Trophy Room on Twitter or Hive, where we are currently the number one PlayStation podcast on Hive. Please don't double check, but I'm pretty sure we are. <laughs> <laughs> you can Excellent. find the trophy room wherever you find your podcast service of choice of course the trophy room is where each and every thursday me and my best friend kyle talk about the latest the greatest in all things playstation last week we gave our predictions for the game awards this week who knows who knows but tune in to find out uh over on apple Podcasts, spotify google play wherever you get your podcast service of choice and rate us five stars because it really helps us out and we also have a patreon at patreon.com slash ps trophy room where you could survive you know support us at a good five doll hairs as well if you'd like or you don't either way also you cheap. Me. yeah also cheap, also cheap. Yeah. affordable mm -hmm. in this economy <laughs> can't find a deal out there like this there's no better way to spend your money. That's right. Except maybe True. on our show. <laughs> or Twitter Blue. If you're desperate for validation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joseph's got jokes. That's right. I love it. But thank you for showing up. Thank you. We appreciate Absolutely. Thank it. Thank you guys for having me, man. This yes. is terrific. Thank you again. And of course, mm, thank you. And of course, a big old thank you to you. Not you three. Yeah, we you, know what you did. The listeners, thank you for listening to our foolish this. thing. Each and every single one of you. Remember, as always, take care of yourself, your loved ones, your family, your friends. Do what you gotta do to be safe nowadays. And please, if you can find it in your hearts, we hope to see you next week. Oh, I mean, bye. we won't actually see you. That's not no. how podcasts work. Yeah. Except for you, we can. We'll see you. know that you're but there. Me, yeah. I mean, no, no, you, the the listener that I'm pointing oh, at. You. We can oh, see you. I can't see you, right? No, not you, but you. I can see you. Yeah, but I right. can't see them. Who is the you to whom I am referring? Open right. up the tab. Okay, that's all. When will saying. then be now? <laughs> soon. Soon. Okay. How soon? How soon? That's from Spaceballs. Did you go to Spaceball Land while you were in Disney? Oh boy, I did. <laughs> yeah, how did that work out? Planet Screwball. Oh, Spaceball. Sorry, <laughs> President Scroob. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm so tired. I don't know if you've noticed me falling asleep since the Sea of Thieves talk, but I'm so tired. <laughs> it's almost That's midnight here, and we haven't even started the after show. I'm just we should, we should delighted about renaming Spaceballs as Screwballs. Screwballs. <laughs> it's probably what they were supposed to be called. It's anyway. a different movie. There is a movie called Screwballs. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Let's let's end this. Let's end this, please. Goodbye. Got a lot please. of nudity in it. Goodbye. Later. Bye. Oh, I get it. <laughs>